the Brenner Brothers. We're running a little late. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have... The Beretta Brothers. Uh, <laughs> he made a new one for us. <laughs> that's great. I love the uh, hold in the beginning. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> Scott Joy, ladies and gentlemen. Bringing joy everywhere. All right. Spreading joy in this proper season, too. Hello, Jesse. Hello, Josh. Hello, Molly. Hello, Grace. Hello, everybody out there. Hello, every, everyone. So, okay, we should just jump into this because we're a little behind, right? Yeah. You got anything right. you have to say? I love you. All right. <laughs> I don't get anything back. No. <laughs> All right, so let's just. <laughs> you know what? I open, Gene? I open my heart up to you. Know you know what? You know what? I like you. Like, I, 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 I um, tolerate you. Thank you. Okay, let's get started. This is this uh, episode part four of our four part series is how the sausage is made. Little Miss Piggy reference. Uh, we thought chef, be great chef, if... tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we thought it'd be great to uh, for you all to meet the people that actually make this stuff happen uh, instead of the people wiggling dollies all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we uh, have some great guests. I think you're going to really be fascinated. But anyway, okay, let's go. Here we go. We're going to start off with the three directors from the Muppets Mayhem show. Uh, we have Mr. Matt Sohn. We have Miss Kimmy Gatewood. And we have Mr. <laughs> Rob Cohen. How's it going? <laughs> Welcome, Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for the sound effect, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> How y'all doing? Good. Great. Excellent. We miss you, you, bro. Aw, I. Uh, I mean, what's great is that we're all doing a second season, so I'm really excited about it. So <laughs> I'm excited. All going. <laughs> all going back, right, Rob? You excited? I am so excited to go back, and yeah, and, uh, yeah. I just don't think the show should involve puppets. I think it should be just the humans. Right. That's what I think. I think it should just be like Taj. Yep. And cameos. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mostly and talk, impossible yeah, lookings. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we're yeah, we're just going for the A listers, basically. Yeah. We're just going yeah. big time A listers. Um, and they tell great stories about the mayhem. Right. <laughs> Matt, I know you're excited about doing more of these episodes. So excited. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> oh my god. Um where do we start? We don't I we were I was thinking maybe I could ask just one question and and for each of you to to answer in your own kind of way. Um can you can you tell the audience like uh what's one unexpected or either whether fun or difficult um thing that you learned about directing with the Muppets because it's it's an odd thing, right? It's it's certainly not typical to just your normal uh, or more traditional human shoots, right? Um, what what's something maybe that you could let pe tell people out there? Kind of what what's what's unusual about working with the Muppets? Yeah, Matt. I'll I'll, I'll start. So I okay. was fortunate enough to work with the Muppets on another two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and I you know. The, the great thing about directing the Muppets is it's it's like 3D directing, you know, because everything is built up three feet. Mm. And because they interact with humans, it's all about figuring how to get Muppets and humans, you know, in the same frame and make it feel real that they're they're not like separated and everybody's sort of together. And they're you know, not floating up off of the ground that it's supposed exactly. to. Right. Exactly. You know, and I think that's uh, uh, 
one of the most fun, challenging things is, you know, when a person walks into a human walks into the room with the Muppets around them, that they're sur- truly surrounded. It's not like everybody's on one side. Mm. Yeah. But it makes it feel like it's more of the world and, and uh, you know, part of the, uh, uh, you know, to, to make it feel as real as possible. Yeah. And to figure out how things can flow that you can have the humans and the puppets interacting in the world and make it feel natural that it doesn't feel like one's in one world, one's in another world. Right. Cause that, and I think just for the audience, so they understand when you say, you know, three feet above the ground, the logistical challenge is our sets are raised so that the puppeteers can stand and perform. So the camera frame is about the bottom of frame is about six and a half feet above the ground usually. So, our sets are raised, the humans stand on that set, and that becomes the floor of our universe, whereas almost four feet below is the stage floor that all the puppeteers are walking on. And so it's about figuring out that dance, right? How do you get which which decks that they're standing on stay in and which go out so that you can have that interaction that you're talking about, right? And just as well as, you know, the area for the camera to move and to find the shots, and it's not getting bumped around but it's right it's, it's yeah three-dimensional director i imagine too it's part you you're always trying to make it feel as though you're not just shooting a puppet show on a proscenium arch where it's like a stage uh presentation and you mm-hmm. want to get in and out and around all of the action yeah right right yeah. and that's the that i i mean i feel like we succeeded it to have the camera moves that kind of come around and show the world and and you know, integrate both those worlds into one to make it all feel right. natural. No. Kimmy, how about you? Well, yeah, I was introduced to puppets on Sesame Street, which is all on the floor on little rollies. And then this was obviously up above. So that was like, you know, watching out so you don't fall off the set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the thing that was um, particularly interesting about the Muppets was scale because we, we, I feel like we had to talk about the heights and the, like what scale they were compared to the mm. humans was something like, I, Bill, I remember you would say all the time, like he looks short or he looks, you know, tall. You have to make sure that they look um, like they're properly scaled because you don't want them to look like miniature little weeny puppets. And right. uh, that, that was kind of an interesting challenge. But I, I was very delighted, like, like, like uh, some of the more difficult things that I thought was like, how are we going to do this? Like, Bill caught a harmonica in that (laughs) in real time. And I like, I can't, I still can't even wrap my head around the fact that it's like you caught it and then you, you and another puppeteer slid back and the camera came around and that was fun. That was amazing. And, and yet like some of the more simple things you're like, how do we get them to look like the proper size? Like (laughs) (laughs) that was a fun shot. But as an actor yourself, Yep. How is it relating to the characters? Like, do you can you talk about just when you're when you're working with them? Do you address them? Do you address these uh, yes. all the idiots below? What's the <laughs> what's the way? Well, I learned very like it, the first time I ever worked with this, like address like the actor who is the person you know below, and then you guys work together. And obviously, you all have you. It's a very collaborative relationship because you're seeing exactly what I'm seeing on screen. Mm-hmm. So we're working together and. I, again, like I think having this like in-depth um, process, like working with Dr. Teeth, like in episode six, like I felt like we got real emotion out of that puppet. And like, it really like, I don't know, it affect, it really affected me. And it, it gave me a lot of like, it, I got excited and very confident to like work with you, Bill, and like the other actors about like the emotional connections that they have with each, with each other, which is not something necessarily that like you would think going into something like this, but it's like right. you guys are amazing actors and like what you can communicate with another person with your voice, like all live is um, it's, you know, your every shot is a practical um, effect shot and it's really cool to watch. That, I love that. That's the, the uh, flashback, right? The, the Dr. T, the, the origin story. Son when the parents come. Yeah. Yeah. I love that episode. Not that I don't love some others, but what's, can you just I mention? I favorite guys. <laughs> But can you can you just mention because you know why and you know why I love it though is because it and I said this actually I think last week in our other show but um, because I love that uh, in my mind and in the writers room uh, 
Floyd and Jim and Dr. Teeth remind me of Jerry and Jim. <clears throat> and I believe that was like that relationship is what I was hoping we'd kind of use, Matt and I used uh, to help tell this story. So it was very emotional for us. And I, I, we hoped that that would come through and you helped us, you know, maintain that and, and guide that, which I love. But what, what are the episodes that, can you just mention which uh, two that you did? That I did, I did three. three. I did three. Fortune of Fun. I did the VR or the um, the the game episode with where they all the fan right. episode, and then I right. did the like penultimate episode uh, where yes. everybody breaks up because they get obsessed with social media. Right, and right. Worked, the the three of us worked together as a team because there was so much to do and you had to pick up stuff. So we really like there's like we're all peppered in each other episode, which I really oh, like nice. working with the the two of these guys. So. Is, yeah, is, that well, and, is that typical for um, a series to have you no. guys talking like that and exchanging? That's great. Yeah. No, I, I, I liked it. The director's a lonely position, so it was nice to, <laughs> to talk to these guys. <laughs> Can I just say just real quick about episodes two? And, and Rob, I don't really, I'm not interested in how you felt about anything, but yeah, I'm uh, just excited to something to do today. What? <laughs> <laughs> Rob, but, can you watch my yard sale for me? <laughs> <laughs> but Matt, Matt did you did five? Yeah, right. Plus some like picking up for right some different. Uh, but but the the cross boarding aspect of this was really a bit much. I think we got we're a little ambitious trying to do three at once, right? I mean, well, it it, it was a challenge, um, but it was also based on I think our schedule because we were trying to get it yeah we no, we thought we were planning well for it but it was thought it was uh, brilliant that's yeah uh, that's a, great idea in the room yeah, and the, for the people out there the cross boarding is like block shooting right Where yeah you're, you're shooting we're, because you got to locate go ahead you say yeah well we were because we were doing three different episodes sort of at the same time and so we when we were in a location we would try to you know shoot everything in that location for those uh, each of those episodes and it, it just like be a juggling act and it it puts more pressure on on uh, you know the actors and and uh to, to find that emotional place where they need to be but also with the crew you know to make sure that the sets are looking like mm -hmm. how they're going to look for yeah. that episode and and yeah. costumes the workshop making sure that the characters and everyone are all right rob's not in his head that they're all in the right uh, you outfits based on where they were in the scene prior that you're not even shooting that day, right? All Which that. is crazy with the show, though, because I, I feel like there's more than any other Muppet show that the outfits, the, the wardrobe mm. Mm. was so much greater than anywhere else that yeah. I've seen. It's a, yeah, well, because the band, right? We, we wanted them to have some more changes because you know you have iconic characters like piggy and fozzy fozzy basically has a you know a tie if right a ribbon tie and a hat kermit doesn't wear anything basically so you if you're from the 2015 episode there weren't a lot of costume changes because everybody was who they are you know and 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 in that thing whereas the band are more colorful more flamboyant more fun to to, to see those wardrobe changes but rob how about you how about your any some things that stuck out about working with the Muppets? That's... Oh my God, I, I loved it. I, I I genuinely, I mean, we, we discussed this, you and I a bunch of times, but I thought it was such a magical experience. You know, it was a lot of work, but it was just so incredible to see how you guys did it. Um, I've done a lot of things with puppets before, but never this way with the deck and the intricacy of the shots um, my first day, I think I had like six pages in the studio and it was you guys doing the massage circle and songs <laughs> and flopping the room. And um, it was, I just, I, as, as hard as it was, I thought it was just incredible. Um, I loved crossing over with Matt and Kimmy, but uh, the thing that really was an amazing education were the eye lines because I didn't even think about it where it's like their eyes don't move. Mm. So you have to cheat the eye line to make it seem like they're addressing the spot you want them to. But uh, it was great to just learn that on the fly and realize that you guys knew where you were going to be and how the eye lines work. So instead of me screwing it up, uh, you guys knew kind of how to cheat that. And 
the math of it I thought was so great because you're like Kimmy said, you don't want to fall in a giant hole. Uh, right. There were many. And then you want to make sure they're looking the right way, but there's music. And then uh, I think the costumes, the, the crew on the show was fantastic. Props was incredible. And uh, I remember even with the day we were filming on the Queen Mary, we were doing different episodes, but on one level of the Queen Mary was an office for Floyd. Right. And on the deck, you were boarding and saying goodbye and then animals showing up and just the hustle <laughs> on this incredibly small boat that, you know, with rotting sections we weren't allowed to go into. Was <laughs> incredible, but I, I just thought it was great because once you're on the bus, like that's, you know, that's how it was when we were filming the musical thing in the desert and the camera kept breaking. Like you just sort of roll with it. And right. um, I, I would also say like one of the most simple things that just impressed me so much was we were on the beach. I think it was picking up some of Matt's stuff, the overhead shot when everybody's partying on the beach. Oh yeah. Trying to figure out like, how are we going to film down and not see the people operating the Muppets and Matt Vogel speaking to me like I was a moron. He's like, I'm going to be one of the people in the crowd. <laughs> That's right. Of course. And <laughs> Why wouldn't just, you know that? I, I, was, I, I just thought it was so brilliant. And um, it was. Yeah, so just, Matt and Eric are both in that shot. They're in the great. shot. Yeah. But yeah. you don't even think about it because there's other humans partying. And why can't they be right. two of those humans? Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I truly, I love the experience. And it was um, the. The schedule and everything else you just sort of jump on board and and realize that you're participating in this sort of historic uh group and um you know matt and kimmy were just i just thought it was such a great mix of people everywhere and everybody kind of understood what was necessary i yeah. also like that we have uh, i i'm a former actor matt's former well writer former writer and matt's a cinematographer yeah well, it's a writer matt's a cinematographer. we all have like very interesting like different backgrounds right yeah mm -hmm. hey so let's let's maybe we bring on a couple people that actually help us do this stuff other we, that we probably we, we could do any of it without <laughs> uh our director of photography from the show craig keefe is with us i'm gonna say hi to him and then i'm gonna say bye to you guys hey, uh, Matt, have, 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 hey. i hope you hey, make a million up, dollars uh on your yard sale Good luck. Uh, we got one more guest we can say hi to. Can we oh, yeah. Okay. We're, we're, and, our, and our first AD extraordinaire, Mr. Woody Allen. Uh, what? Actually, Ross Noble. It's, uh, hey, it's a delight to be here. Delight. Uh, <laughs> hey, is this the official rap party we never had? Yeah. Yep. This yeah. Is cool. It. With the same level of catering. Kimmy, yeah. thank you so much. Guys. Thanks for taking the time. Again. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Kimmy. Bye. Bye bye. Look, the dudes now. Yeah. We were respectable um, five minutes ago. So yeah. now let's cool. talk about it. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think any of us have ever been respectable. Well, that's true. That's probably true. Hey, so, you know, we were just talking with them about um, maybe what are some of the unusual mm -hmm. challenges or differences between working in a more traditional set, right, and a Muppets set. And I know you guys... I mean, there's so many different things. Is there any, maybe just starting with you, Craig, is there, is it, actually, let me ask, let me ask you this question. What's the challenge of working with three different directors on one, and this could, this would be for both of you, actually, on one, sh one series, is there, who's the worst, and then who is the best? <laughs> Well, Matt Stone is definitely um, the worst. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it for me, it's a huge challenge because I get virtually no prep time with the other two directors. I, I had a ton with Rob, with Matt because he was the first, um, right. but the other two, it really fell upon Ross and you and others to to really guide everybody through how we're going to do this. Hmm. And Ross, how about you? Well, I mean, with multiple directors, you have hope, right? That yeah. maybe things can get better. <laughs> but then you realize, no, no, it's not really any particular person. Right. Wait, when you, it's the challenges. The, the challenges. Not, not in right. terms of that. The personality is fantastic, clearly. Right. Obviously, right. I wouldn't be coming here right now. These yeah. are my favorite people. But the challenges uh, that we have 
you think maybe there's an approach or a different thing, but really it's it, the challenges are what they are. Unless the Muppets become actual physical people, people right. uh, it's going to be what it is. And, and actually, in a way, it, it speaks to everyone's excellence. There is no wrong way to do it. And there's a lot of right ways to make it as good as it can be. And I thought, mm. you know, everyone brought a different angle, but like there is no cracking the nut, which is making it, oh, this makes this yeah. such an easy process. There's right. nothing that, Craig it, can do. There's nothing I can do. It is <laughs> right. It is, right. Right. It well, doesn't become any more efficient. Yeah. Uh, who's well, directing. I, I think for, you, for, for the audience, I think what Ross is really alluding to is it's a very, very complicated process. And it takes a lot of time to do it and to figure it out. You know, it's one thing to have two puppets standing there talking to each other, but the second they start to move, it gets really complicated, even for a very, very simple shot. Right. And, and we were talking a little bit about, you know, uh, trying to shoot three episodes, a block shooting and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm sure that you, the challenges of lighting it, right. Uh, all of that stuff, it just adds another layer to, just the ridiculous logistical challenges of all of it that are inherent in it, right? Yeah, definitely hopping back and forth, you know, it re requires a level of continuity that's, yeah, it, it is another whole element of messing with your mind. <laughs> right, right. Um, and, and we also had multiple units going at some times as well, you know, so conveying, you know, what we need to do to all the other uh, DPs and crews, like it was, you know, it, it gets, it's very, very complicated. Yeah, there was one day we had four different sets operating at the same time. Mm -hmm. Jesus oh. Christ, I don't even remember. I think I just didn't even, I just kept going. I don't even know what we, and <laughs> we had two first ADs, right? We had two, like, didn't we, like, at some point, everybody was working, right? Trying to get the yeah. thing done. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and and block shooting uh, for those I don't know the the audience who who we're talking to, but block shooting yeah. is instead of doing one episode at a time, is you do three or four or two depending on the show, mm -hmm. to to you know so you can kind of shoot it as one thing and 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 you kind of get some efficiencies in terms of the prep and the schedule mm -hmm. hypothetically, uh, but that also depends on some other things. Scripts need to be done completely. Um, you know, certain elements and locations need to be known because uh, a block shoot works if everything is kind of locked down. If it's not, then what you've done is you've made things exponentially more difficult because you've added in more elements that are still not mm -hmm. locked down. So at, at various points, we had efficiencies and sometimes less, less efficiencies. We, right. we had a couple of script changes, I think. Oh, yeah. Do you think? Yeah, a couple. <laughs> I think we were like triple goldenrod blush at one point, right? I, I, yeah, I think the, I think the pilot the pilot was somewhere <laughs> around 27 script change, scripts, revisions, <laughs> I think, something like that. Well, I actually got into a discussion. I wanted to change, usually do script colors for different uh, revisions, and we had so many. I wanted to change it to going to a picnic. So you have an <laughs> apple, you have a banana, you have a carrot, because we had no idea what color we're on. So at least if you say I'm bringing figs, all right, we're pretty deep in. You know what it is. <laughs> Ross, Ross, could you explain that as Woody Allen, please? Yeah. Well, how, would, uh, how did Woody feel about working with the Muppets? Well, it was uh, it was a situation I I recall very fondly. Of course, uh, that and oh. getting a root canal. Oh. Uh, remembering uh, similar type. <laughs> is this on? It's <laughs> <hot>. <laughs> We had Woody Allen working with us uh, quite often. Which yeah, until is HR exciting. heard and didn't, you know, not appropriate for a million reasons. <laughs> How about, uh, so the, um, maybe Craig, you want to talk a little bit, I think people don't, may not realize that virtual wall. Oh the yeah, the volume. Not yeah. Going, the volume, not going out, to, actually going out to the desert. Um, yeah, so episode five, Joshua Tree was all shot on an LED volume, which, in a very, very simple, simple explanation of a very complicated machine is that basically we shot the entire desert in front of a wall of video panels. So the background is, is not green screen, it's not real. It's, um, it's, a, it's a 3D model that is projected live onto the wall. And, there, and you know, very similar to how, how, exactly the same as how the Mandalorian is largely shot, if anyone's familiar with that process. You know, Billy and, was showing me some back behind the scenes photos of it. And it's remarkable how the background will follow the direction of the camera as well. 
So you've got that yeah. kind of assistance. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then there was a little bit of a foreground set. So, and that's where we were actually, where all the puppeteers were and the, and the puppets and, and, um, and, uh, and the humans as well. Um, but then the trick is you have to blend the foreground with the virtual and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a little, it's a little tricky, but it was really great because, you know, we were able to create a desert, you know, we could only afford to, to light, you know, maybe a couple of acres of the real desert. Whereas here I was able to light the entire desert, put stars mm -hmm. up in the sky, put some light in the horizon, really create a, an immersive environment that we wouldn't have been able, been able to do in real life. That mm -hmm. plus nobody wants to work in the desert. <laughs> Right. Especially right. all night long. It's cold. And Rob, what, what were the challenges of working with the wall that you experienced? Because that was your episode, right? Yeah. Um, I thought it was really cool. I, I think um, the challenge was initially just understanding how the rocks were going to look real enough, given what Craig was just saying. Like you had a real part of a shack and, and the campfire. Um, I think it was just tracking stuff so that it made sense in your head uh so that the background matched if let's say moog was walking from the van over towards the shack like you wanted to make sure that it it tracked um because people normally think practically you know they think uh if i put the camera here then i'll see these boulders and then we had baby animal there was a lot of stuff we also had some green screen elements where we were burning weird allen there was like a lot of stuff going on. I think that was Ross's last day. So he was pretty high, um, <laughs> but mostly pulled it off. Yeah. Um, but I've never seen anybody drive faster, like out of Woodland Hills in my life. Well, so I, you may, can I ask okay. this? So directing the Muppets is already a, a learning curve. And so does it make things easier to have things like the large screen or is it just more new technology to learn that makes it more confusing and difficult i'll just compliment the crew honestly and it's not even like me giving the bs answer it's so many people just trying to get a regular shot uh you know like dr teeth going up the ramp of a boat you go how hard can that be but then you realize <laughs> you have a very small space on a ramp you've got extras as passengers. We had a 95 year old gentleman pass out that day. Oh my God. I remember that. Yeah. Yep. What? I mean, you've got a boat behind you. You have to reset, like even things like that require such military planning. So when you're doing anything, you know, digital, it's just an extra level, but it really was impressive. The entire crew, I, I thought the spirit of everybody there was great that they embrace things and, um, you know, just realize that you're getting to do, something with the Muppets. So you were able to, you know, like there was the job to be done, but at the same time, everybody wanted it to look fantastic and um, just nice people. Like, I think that's the key. If you had people that were not in the same mindset, it would be impossible. Like Matt. Yeah, but he's not here. Oh, <laughs> Matt, you're still here. Oh, no, he's there. Hey, Matt, what, what, <laughs> Matt, do you, do you have a, um, a, a favorite or, or actually, out of the episodes that you did for the yeah. show, is there something that you look back after watching and go, oh, I wish we would have done that? Or, boy, that turned out better than I thought. Or, you know, well, is there I, stuff that you always second guess? Our, we did our hiking bit. Yes. Everybody was hiking, which was an was amazing tough. event yeah. just to do that because we needed the track for the camera. We needed the track for the performers. We had. It sounded so simple when we went to scout it, didn't it? Oh, everybody. Yeah. Guys? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds simple. But there were there were so many moving parts, and you know, and and because we sort of did it as a wonder as well to sell all the beats right. and to go through everybody as they were hiking, it was it was so much fun and worked ultimately so well. Yeah. Uh, we got all the pieces in line and everything moving at the correct time, but yeah. Uh, Yes. I, I have a I have a great behind the scenes video of that that I show people off off of my phone because you know as we all know a very simple walk and talk is a very simple thing you have a city cam or you have a, a handheld camera right. and you just walk and talk it's like the most simple thing but you know to do it with puppets it took us weeks to figure out and a lot of grips and a lot of heavy equipment you know hauled up a mountain to to you know pull off this 
Oh my god! Probably a very very simple shot. And yeah. and that's you know that's important. Like we, you know, I, I tell people this is the most in, fun and challenging job in the most creative way because not only are we, are we telling great stories and having a blast and, and making funny things, but you know we 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 go through extraordinary links to make these scenes happen, and we get to use every tool in the book. I mean, we we try to do as much as possible in camera, but we use every single visual effects and special effects tool that's out there in order to do all of this stuff. I, I would also just to address what you said, Bill, one of the moments that really stuck out to me, we were doing the finale and the amazing Denise Pizzini, who I believe might be coming on here later. Yeah. The wings of the Hollywood bowl off to the side. Oh. We, need, we needed to get all this information in across Dr. T from the band to see the humans in the wings. And, but you were doing the scene. And I, I remember I learned this after I spoke to you, when you were sharing how important it was that your parents, Dr. T's parents were at the show, you <laughs> yourself were getting emotional. And I thought this was like the most incredible acting I'd ever seen. But then when I spoke to you, you said you were thinking of your grandfather, I think, or one of your grandparents. Yeah, yeah uh, my grandfather. But it was just, it was to me that shot typified every department coming together and getting what you needed, but also uh, Dr. Teeth having a real human moment where he's not being his normal silly self. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like that image is burned in my head because you're, you're really getting everything, but also you're believing at that point you're in the wings of the Hollywood bowl because of what Denise designed. And right. was just, that was even with somebody literally with a stopwatch telling us when we had to stop that night. <laughs> um, I just thought it was, that was like such, everybody was understood what their, their position on the team was. And it just gelled to me in that image. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. It all kind of, that's a, one of those moments that comes together in all ways. Yeah. Right. And, and, exactly. and everybody, because we are all so collaborative, we can't do any of this without each other. Right. There's it's, it's like impossible. There, there really is no, <laughs> no way to do it. Um, well, one thing, Bill, if it, it just, Sorry if you're going somewhere, but yeah. like no, go ahead. all of these, all these individual things yeah. also represented weeks of meetings, usually during lunchtime, during in between scenes, like, right. you know, the, the, the elements we've talked about, the rooftop, there, yes. you know, obviously the volume was uh, so many meetings with so many people around the world. And yes. so like every moment, I feel like you're constantly being ushered around. Usually I'm the one ushering. And like showing, like, all right, we're here now. We're here now. Talk, yeah. Five minutes for that. Two minutes for that. Now we're gonna go over. And it's just you're in motion the entire time, which yeah. is both very, you know, exciting, but it's just relentless and exhausting. But but and yeah. you and you know, I mean, there aren't many people that can take all of these pieces and make sense of it. And you you do do that incredibly incredibly well. I mean, True. I don't I don't know how you manage all of it. It it seems impossible. But uh, you're you're just kind of that, you know. Ross is that hub of where everybody needs him all the time, and I don't know how you don't lose your shit. <laughs> but uh, like me, I did. I, can I just say uh, there was a moment? Do you remember this, Ross? And uh, it was yes. on Rob show. You go do? ahead. I'll pretend no. I don't. When I was I was under the deck <laughs> through the sand. Uh, yes. We were waiting to shoot Doctor. <laughs> yes. And I lost my mind because I just I couldn't leave and yep. it was like i don't know what happened but it was like people were on a break or something i don't know what happened i love it you know it shows you're human it shows like <laughs> finally we yeah. cracked him we finally got him too i blew everyone's gonna crack at one moment right except right. Rob, yeah. rob maybe not so much but everyone has a moment <laughs> but that was the first time i saw you and i was like yes now <laughs> you got it we, we got, got it, it. we got it but you know yeah. what else is cool about that uh, just the beach stuff uh i remember uh, I was speaking with Eric, who does animal. People on the beach were going crazy when they were addressing animal. Like, mm -hmm. and the crowd of people were talking to animal. Uh, or wait, that was at, at Descanso Gardens. Sorry, Descanso Gardens. Oh, and um, he right. was just he took me aside and he goes, "You want to see something really cool?" But he didn't say it in an egotistical way because it was just yeah. him. So people are walking by this nerdy guy, and yeah, then he yeah. brings out animal, and everybody at this council gardens immediately came <laughs> over to animal and Eric became invisible. Oh yeah. And I just thought it was so cool because they're having conversations with this entity. And that was also what I thought was so rare as opposed to regular shows is you, you have this 
element that everybody grew up with. They're like seeing them right in front of you. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It happens People, all the all the time. Adults, kids, everyone. It, yeah, it wasn't crazy. when when my daughter met the Muppets for the first time, um, it wasn't until like six months later she was like, Dad, I, I think I know how the Muppets work. And that was a it took her that long to realize there was a human underneath. <laughs> uh, but I'll also point out, you know, how much of the heavy lifting Bill was doing throughout the show. Oh, yeah. Because you were running back and forth to the writer's room dealing with stuff. You were dealing with stuff on set and then mm -hmm. doing, you know, I, I for the 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 song uh, in Can You Picture This? You know, we did. Can you picture that? Yeah. Can you picture you that? You and I worked on that. Yes, we figured that out together. It was it was bananas, but just the physicality, you know, of the the calm in the camera frame of seeing everybody move and the chaos down below, <laughs> all you guys on your scooties running around and trying to get to the spots and having props thrown in and stuff thrown around and it it's it's amazing and unbelievable. But so but again, but Bill, so much of it was sort of resting on your shoulders because you were sort of leading the charge and dealing with so many different things all yeah. at once. Well, that's yeah. the fun of it. Uh, but, 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 but the, and also we were on a location, which makes it well, harder, right? Yeah. It's not like we were standing and moving around, but um, we actually, we, Gene and I were just talking. Um, there's, there's like footage and like of that and other great stuff. Craig has great stuff. So I think we want to try and do uh, just a show around behind the scenes and get approval from, you know, Muppets and all that and make sure we can use all that stuff. Cause I would love, we'd love to share that stuff right now, but we just can't do it. So for our audience out there, we're going to try and do a behind the scenes thing uh, when we can. So you can really experience what all of us uh, go yeah. through. <laughs> your, your, jaws, your, your, your jaws will really drop anyone who's a fan to see the, the images I've seen from Billy. Yeah. It's crazy. And so much just, fun. You're so deep in it that I would love to see that just to be able to watch it as a spectator without any responsibilities, but you also appreciate it. Uh, I, you know, I, that's the, that's the part where you're like, you're wishing you could step back and watch the Muppets just do their thing and enjoy it. As opposed to like me nervously asking Ross, like, give me the 10 minute alert or whatever was I was irritating him with. That was hey. it. Ross saying, guys, we got to go. We got to go. <laughs> I, I tell people all the time when I'm showing them behind the scenes stuff that, you know, you, you don't, people have no idea what you guys do, you know, to be there performing, you know, doing the voice and the mouth and the body and one hand with, with, with one arm and having a person standing right next to you doing the other arm and coordinating together and looking at a monitor where the image is backwards. So you flip the screen direction in your mind, plus you're reading the script. You're, you have to have comedic timing and you all sing on top of that, like you are the most talented human beings in the world and oh, nobody <laughs> knows it because they never get to see that. It's truly incredible and it blows people away. Well, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Can I just tell you a quick story? Just some, because there, there is a, um, there's an on, uh, or I should say a tradition of the idea of anonymity, right? With the Muppet performers and, and, and actually kind of enjoying that idea, right? Because, um, years ago when the Muppet show was at its peak, Jerry Nelson, uh, you know, the count, uh, the original Floyd, one of the original Muppet performers was on a plane going, traveling from Los Angeles to New York. And he happened to be, this like sounds odd, but he happened to be sitting next to Al Pacino and they're sitting on the plane. And of course, Jerry knows Al, but Al doesn't really know Jerry. And they start to talk and, Al learns who Jerry is and, he, and it's the height of the moment. He's like, Oh my gosh. You know, he's like, that's unbelievable. You're, you're, you're one of the moment performers. He said, I, I'm just curious. Do you, don't you ever like want people to know like who you are like as an actor? That's why, you know, people see this. It's the ego thing, right? Where people know who I am. And, and Jerry said, Oh, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of like, you know, just being, I can create characters and it's people don't know it. You know, oh, okay, I guess I understand that. So they finally they <laughs> land in they land in New York City, and as they exit the plane, Al is completely bombarded with people, and Jerry kind of 
just sneaks into the the group alone. He taps him on the shoulder. He goes, "You take care now, Al." And he walked out because <laughs> he was really just as popular as Al Pacino at that time, you know. And uh, he went on his way. So, yeah, I, I appreciate what you're saying, Craig. I, I mean, we I'm sure all the my performers do, but there's something sweet about uh, getting to you know hide beneath this stuff and. Uh, but anyway, so so thank you guys. Um, we're gonna move on to our next segment. Thank really you appreciate guys. you coming yeah. and hanging out with us and playing. If if any by any chance, Ross and Craig, could you guys maybe just stick around for a little bit just for the next portion? Could I could we bring you into that? Love yeah, that. I mean Rob and Matt are definitely leaving though, right? Yeah, we want them yeah, out. Yeah, we've we've them out. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As long as yeah. you need as yeah. what, yeah, no. what else can Thanks they for the warm up, guys? They they can't yeah. they can't watch on YouTube, right? No, no. Uh, Perfect. Good. Yeah. All right. Thanks so uh, much for having us. Great to see you guys. Thank you so you much. Guys. Oh, wait. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Something together again. Say again. Oh, uh, this is to Craig and to Ross. We're gonna work together again. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. What a weird threat. What you mean on the second season? <laughs> <laughs> the second season. Exactly. On the second season. Well, it, it's coming yeah. up. So we'll see you guys soon. That's it. All right. Thanks, Thank you guys. guys. Take care. All right. you guys. Yeah. Yeah. See y'all. Oh, they are the worst. Oh, God. Thank God they're gone. I wanted to say, how, how did you, you guys work that? with these two? Like, well, you know, that? really, Ross and I did all, all of their work for them. Now it can be said. Yeah. Now, it can now, be now, said. now the truth can be said. Yeah, exactly. When are you going to tell them that this was just like a punk thing? Like, the, the <laughs> show? can I be there when I see it? <laughs> so all right, we've got a green room yes. full of talented people we want to talk to. So let's bring yes. some on. We're moving into now... Uh, I think uh, a really amazing segment, which is just better uh, than the first one. Oh, much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no, no. But uh, well, let's just bring let's bring her on. This is our production designer, Denise, and a lovely Italian girl, by the way, uh, Miss Denise Pizzini. Hey, there she Hi, is. Guys. Hi, nice to see you. all of you. you. Oh, great to see you. And then we're also going to bring on another guy who, you know, we have to tolerate. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he helps us move stuff around occasionally. Uh, Mr. Bodie Hyman. Let's bring Bodie on. Hey. hey. Uh, hi, guys. How are you? She to the stars. Indeed. Oh, thumbs up. Look at that. Look, he's got a thumbs up on his Yeah, friend. what is that all about? How, How does, does that happen? Thing? That's the know. new Apple, the new Apple program. If you do certain things like gestures like this, balloons come and it can oh. make it rain, thumbs up. Yeah. It mostly oh, wow. just pops up when you don't even know what's gonna happen. <laughs> it causes yeah. conversations like this. Oh my god. Is, is there still deck icon? <laughs> right. A monitor icon. Uh, Denise, thank you for coming and doing this. Sure. Um, my pleasure. You, uh, people may or may not know, you also uh, were a production designer on the 2015 series, mm -hmm. uh, as well as this one. I, I wondered if um, there were some newer, because you, I mean, you basically did it all on the 2015 series. Well, I can't think of much more than <laughs> you would have to figure out how to do with the Muppets as far as, you know creating these amazing sets and, and well, figuring all that. What's the, was there a difference in for, this yes, show? For the mayhem, you know, we had a practical location for the shack that we were, you know, we had an, a practical exterior and then we had to build the interior. We didn't have to do that on the other show. You know, the other right. show was mainly, you know, the, the main set was uh, the offices and the stage, which is right. really easy to do a stage on a stage. But right. um, um, that was, you know, one of the bigger challenges was was the interior exterior shack and to make sure it all kind of, you know, worked together. And can you can you describe because it was also a, a little bit of a combination of things to create the exterior, right? It was there were practical things that you added, like that beautiful tower. Correct. But then we, the top of it, maybe you can talk about. It. Right. We added the tower because we wanted to have, we wanted that to be Janice's room. So on stage, Janice could have, you know, because she does, she has, what it, what is it? Free range sleeping or whatever. Uh, what free it, range pillows. Yeah. Right. All right. What was it? Yeah. What was that? Free range, something was, like that sleeping. Yeah. yeah. And so we didn't want, you know, I didn't want any angles or anything, which is kind of difficult when, when, and all the flooring and everything is square, you know. Right. So, um, mm. so that was a little bit of a challenge. But um, 
you know, we wanted that uh, tower to be Janice's. So we added that onto the location, onto the mm. house. And then we had a rooftop deck that we built on stage as well. And um, then I think we went to a certain point and then we VFX the rest of it on the location. Right. So the VFX was kind of the wall on the roof kind of thing. Right. And then the, and then that beautiful little peak on top of your tower. Uh -huh. right. right. Yeah. Right. And so, I, I guess there were more location things on this lots, too, right? Yeah, Ross lots more. Ryan. I mean, when we did the, um, uh, can you picture that the painting and stuff? I mean, a lot of that was done practical as well. You know, we had panels that we pre-designed that looked like paint, you know, like they, as if they were painted. And so then we could add in those panels and, you know, we had uh, the driveway pre-done because we don't have time to do, you know, to do anything while we're shooting. Yeah. So, like the driveway was pre-done so we could just roll it out in between takes and, you know, and we painted the grass. And so there Yeah, was, we had one day for that. So yeah. we had to figure out how to oh get a God. house from nothing to fully painted in one in one day how do you Not do even. that while yeah. filming the things and do we go backwards do we what what is there what is hidden so her team had uh, an amazing amount of figuring out yeah like how, how do we do that transformation it's not like we left and came back and it was done no right. was, well, that would make way too much sense <laughs> one day so how do we do it so that's that yeah, yeah. and then it wasn't even one day it was half a day because we had all the danny trejo and other stuff to do oh that that's right, that's right. but yeah. let me can i ask this because i don't know obviously everybody's having all kinds of conversations all the time and figuring out, right. We can't all be part of different conversations and meetings. Did you and Craig Denise have like, do you guys talk about um, uh, 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 like color patterns and, and like how, you know what I mean? Visually like Craig, how are you going to shoot something that has this palette of colors and textures? Is that something that you guys talk about as well? Uh -huh. For the most part, um, yes, and and um, and we mainly talk about design, like physical design, so mm -hmm. we can accommodate the camera. Uh, you know, on this show, you know, I mean, I present colors to to everybody. We do a lookbook and we present the colors, and you know, which I'm, was amazing. That was a great lookbook, by the way. So, so everybody kind of has a reference to what we're going to do, yeah. and um, you know, and and the the concept for this show was you know not to be super cute to have these these characters in the real world so there was lots of aging and and um you know like in the shack and, and in these locations we wanted everything to be as real and as authentic as possible right but, but yeah. a lot of what craig and i have to do is just figure out how how the camera can navigate through you know these decks and things and what, where, where it needs to be open. And then I always have to design the flooring in, you know, it has to be divisible by two. And because then when a deck is removed, like we, we designed the linoleum in the kitchen. So you right. see scenes and in Penny's office, Penny's office, carpet tiles. So you can see scenes and then, and as fast as the crew goes, they're not thinking about, well, does this fit here? To, you know, so we figure it out. So mm -hmm. it all kind of fits and you can't really mess it up. So that, and just so people understand, so our, the flooring, let's say of Penny's office, right. as we've talked about earlier in our segments a little bit, um, are these floors that you take in and out and move and, and there are some different sizes, right? Of decking, it's, it's steel deck. So you have a four foot by four foot square decking. You can have a two foot by four foot square decking, which actually is going to take me over to our other gentleman here on the on the show, Mr. Bodie. Uh, he's the key grip on our show and has done many Muppet uh, challenges in the past. <laughs> uh, I swear you guys hired me just to get to Bodie. Every that's time. all it is. <laughs> That's all it is. We just want Bodie and his team, of course. But can you, um, can you just quickly describe to everybody what a key grip does? Well, uh, everything. But but yeah, Bodie, maybe you can speak to it a little bit. What actually? Yeah, I guess that's the question. What what is it that you do? Or actually, what's the what's the challenges? And I've asked this before on, on kind of in a general way, but 
what's the difference between working on a traditional show with your team and and and, and the Muppets? What are, what's the other craziness that goes on? Well, in a normal in a normal TV show, we do lighting and we we work with the camera and we rig cameras and we move cameras, um, and and we generally support you know all the other departments. Um, with, with with Muppet projects, it, it becomes much more um, collaborative with the performers because of the height uh, situation. So we we create a, a, a set with with our department that's elevated off the floor about three feet. And then where performers need to be, we remove the floor and then we create uh, devices and tools for, for the camera to, to work in that environment, whether reaching out with the crane or building little bridges for the dollies or bringing in steel deck at a different height for handheld cameras. Uh, but it, it becomes much more three-dimensional um, than, than a normal television show or anything else for that matter. But also within a scene, you're you're moving decks in, you're moving decks out, depending on where the people are going to be walking versus where. Right? I mean, there's a lot, a, like a lot of that. I don't know how you guys. <laughs> yeah, do it. It, it, it it can it can sometimes become more like like a, a theater performance where decks are sliding in and out, mm. uh, you know, quietly while we're filming, so that people, you know. A, a puppet can be puppeteered a, across the camera, and then right behind them, a real actor will walk um, in a space that didn't exist a moment before. Um, so it, it the the problems are many, and the solutions oftentimes. What are, are some? Are, what are some of them? What what's like some of the more challenging things? Well, being being able to get humans and and puppets in the same space because uh, you know un, unless the puppeteer is lying on the on the ground. Um, in 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 a human environment, uh, which is very uncomfortable for the puppeteers to 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 work in, as you know, um, then we need to make it puppet friendly. And to make it puppet friendly, it's no longer human friendly. Um, you know, so uh, and yeah, locations are a huge the, challenge. The what? And locations are a huge challenge well, for the department. Just the fact those things weigh a ton just moving those things oh. it's such physical work that you know i mean i don't know how they do it because I it's, don't either. you know and trying to figure out where these things are going and doing all this stuff at the same time and just moving these extremely heavy decks you know and and i mean people won't know unless they're there but the the grip team has such patience i, I i'm just always amazed that they're, they're never really that upset like i don't i never see them get angry <laughs> well that you know? team there's a lot of other grips in the world that, but I'm, that's what i'm saying this that. special we're yeah. so lucky you yeah. know because they really i mean i just there's there's guys like uh, jerry who was just like spider-man he would just fly underneath the deck and he'd come out and he'd be smiling because he loved it you know <laughs> I, I, I was just always amazed at how hard everybody works for these for these dumb Muppets, you know? <laughs> well, I, I think what's different about this as opposed to other jobs is it's so much more collaborative and you guys are appreciative and we feel involved in your work more mm. so than on a normal thing where we turn the set over to the actors and then we're done. Uh, right. You know, we need it, everybody. It's, needs it's, a, it's, a, it's a give and take in terms of, of what can be done and, and, and what the expectations are. And the you guys are always so appreciative and so um, passionate about it that it it, be, it gets contagious, you know. And, and I, I have a I, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry, finish. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, and I I try to bring people into that mix that are also passionate about stuff and and kind, friendly people, you know, who want to be collaborative and don't want to just um, you know be be separate from from the the photography right and nobody's coming was, in just to do their job they're yeah. they're all in some way we hope if anybody has a suggestion an idea it's all open right to to play and figure it out together i've, I've got a i've got a question from our, our viewers um which is related it's a practical one eve cunning is asking do they edit out the sound or is that are they just that quiet when they're working and moving things around is there Something of you the can say about that? Of the performers moving? Well, I guess there's all these carts and wheels under the performers, and there's people moving set pieces. Oh. And, oh. you know, 
Hmm. Well, the, the stuff that's being moved in a shot, yes, it has to be quiet. So it'll be on, on you know, special rollers or, you know, we use tennis balls on the bottom of the steel deck sometimes, you know. But, yeah, it, it, we, tr we have to make things as quiet as possible. Yeah, and the and the audio team, you know, when the Muppets are performing, we wear our microphones in headbands usually, right at the right about here above our nose. So the directional lobs uh, kind of grab, you know, a lot of the sound right here. So, but but you also have they're also doing uh, the sound in the room, the the uh, ambient sound as well. So yes, we have to be quiet, but there's only so much we can do when. We're rolling across the floor and trying to go around yeah. each other. Right. But uh, the big, also the big steel decks that we're talking about, that's all moved before we roll. So maybe that's if what there's any confusion right, about right. that, like a lot of the, this big moving walls, you know, sometimes we have to have things flying around during the take, but usually it's right. like yeah. the big stuff's been moved and it's just these guys and it's not too bad. Right. Here, somebody cool. just said that I did that. So I just, I guess I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah well you know um uh well, well, sorry 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 I, I there was a, something i wanted to ask uh denise um uh is there something that you designed that either got changed and you didn't think it was going to work as well but maybe turned out okay or vice versa was there something you loved and you had to give in for whatever, I don't know, reason. Is there is there anything like that that you wish you would have kept in from original design or something? Um, not not really. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I want, you know, the showrunners and and the producers and you know to be happy. It's not about about me. Um, the the one curveball I did get on this show was Moog's trailer. That right. Was, that was a little bit of a you know. Um, where I either misunderstood or there was not a, the right communication and it went, and then it went in a completely different direction, which was fine. And, you know, but that was a little bit of a curveball. but. Uh, yeah. I think the, the idea, I think the confusion was within the, the show creators uh, of what we thought it was, but initially we, we were thinking it was the interior Though it had ended up with all of the kind of automatic right. things, right? Still had all that. Uh, I always thought I thought it was going to be, <laughs> you know, more of the Muppet fan interior, which was the original right, right plan, and right. what you guys had done, and which what and is then, what we did, and then yeah. it completely switched to this uh, to this completely different, um, you know, not to say that one was better than the other, I right. Think I think the first one had more character right. and it said a lot more and it was, it was more playful and, and right. interesting. And then it kind of went to this high tech kind of. It was like the W hotel or something all of a sudden. It was right. <laughs> yes, moves, boutique trailer. It was still cool, but yeah, yeah. So, so, but that was a big change It kind of at the last minute in yeah. a way, right? It all had to happen very fast. Yeah. Yeah. That, and so uh, that was the only, um, I mean, all of it, is is a challenge you know every set had its own you know set of challenges but that right. one was was um was the one that i you know kind of kind of took us all back like oh okay. right right you know. can you guys talk about maybe denise this probably this wasn't maybe one of the bigger challenges as for you um but can you guys talk about the evening of when we had to go shoot up looking over hollywood uh the the scene where um uh, Ta, uh, uh, a Moog is sitting on his trailer. Remember, and he meets Lily up there. They talk about they're, they're looking out over the city. Do you guys remember that scene? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Craig, can you tell us what, what what's that like getting up there and getting all of that? And Ross, were you on that? Was that your episode? It, was it, it wasn't. Uh, well, part of it was. Part of a reshoot was. But um, the, not, the initial incident and evening that Griffith Park I wasn't I didn't have the delight of being there for that. Oh right. Craig okay. can speak to that. Yeah. Yeah. And Bodhi, I'm sure too. Yeah. 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 I mean half half of that scene was shot at a completely different location. You know, we, we shot the wides at the um uh, up on uh up at Griffith Park overlooking the city. But then yeah. we were shut down for the evening because tra tragically there was an accident uh with a driver. Everybody's okay, but uh for safety we 
we uh, we shut down for the night and went away. And then um, and then yeah, we shot the remainder of the scene, which was basically all of Nora's coverage in Santa Clarita, which is nowhere near the top of a mountain overlooking <laughs> Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Bodie, what's it like getting all that stuff up there? How are how early do you show up when we're going to shoot? <laughs> you know, actually, not not that early. We we take a bit of a pre call, but uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it 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 comes. Uh, you certainly need to bring uh, a thousand different items that might come up, uh, whether or not you you thought you were going to need them or not. You can't you can't have too much stuff, you know. In terms right. of Apple boxes and Steel Deck, and you know, I'm I'm thinking about when when we had uh, uh, the the goat walking and the people walking, and you guys all traveling, and we had to come up with with a way of making you guys be able to slide on track and people walk in the middle, and you can't plan for every eventuality. So we right. we usually bring lots of extra stuff and extra people, and then uh, hope for the best, and things go somewhat according to plan or radically not according to plan and we usually find a way to to make it work and, there's definitely uh, a, a definitely a special list of gear that we bring for muppets jobs that we don't bring for anything else and we've even, like, we've even invented equipment that that is you know specific to to uh, accomplishing shots like for example what craig what kind of thing well like the the large decks that bodie built on location for you guys yeah, maybe right. you can do that. Billy, yeah. I just have to have to be the bad guy in, in order to stay on schedule. Yes. I think we're gonna have to say goodbye to our current guest. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move I, on to our next I do have to band. point out one quick thing though. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think the funniest shot in the entire series was animal animals, you know, camera the, the camera pointed at animal when he's on the uh, on the wax machine. Spinning yeah. around and around, <laughs> yeah. and that was Bodie's idea. That was genius. Wow. That wow. the day, and it makes me laugh every time I see it. That's amazing. That's You're so welcome. Great. <laughs> yeah. That, that Thank was you. Fun. That was fun. That's that's a perfect example of uh, something that was passed down from from I think Jim Henson. What I was always told was that when he would start a production, he would always say. If you have ideas, please say something, you know, don't don't feel like you can't, no matter who it is, no matter what job you do. If there's something that you see and it inspires you, please come and say something. And I think that's a perfect example. There was also, um, I wish I could remember his name, but one of our COVID officers, uh, we were shooting something and he leaned over to me and he said, you know, what if, what's his name said this? It was like a little play on words that popped into his head. And we tried it and we used it and people laughed and, you know, so I, it's, I just love that. I love that everybody feels comfortable enough to do that sort of thing. I, it, it's great. It, I it really that. is a family for sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, family, thank right. you so much. Nice to see you all. Good to see you all. Thanks for coming on. Really appreciate you taking time out of your Sunday to come and see us for a minute. Thank you. Well, so wonderful yeah. to see you all. Woody Allen, thank you again. Looking forward to your next project. Uh, yeah, there's no new projects, but thank you. Oh, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. They changed the lock on the on the door. I can't get in. <laughs> thank you, everybody. All right, thank all you. Right. Guys. Take care, guys. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Um, <laughs> Bye, Bye, Denise. Bye. Bye. There yeah, we I'm go. still kicking out of the green room. All right. Here we well, go. No, aren't right. they amazing? These, I mean, talk about people who work hard. Yeah. And now we're going to bring even more people on who work incredibly <laughs> hard. Uh, but we're gonna now we're gonna we're gonna fly across the country and visit some friends uh, who, basically, I have to say, uh, are responsible for keeping these Muppets well. <laughs> alive, taken care of, designed, um, you know, just uh, we, there's, it'd be impossible to do it without these folks. I'm t talking about, there's a, a place called Puppet Heap in Hoboken, New Jersey. In a faraway land. Called Hoboken. There's a man there named Mr. Paul Andreco. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Paul, and you've been very patient. Hey, fellas. You, you, you have been very patient. I saw you come in very early in the green room. I, oh, I didn't, I, I didn't expect to be um, that early, but um, it was fun to listen to everybody talk about the production, you know, because, um, you know, I'm here running the shop here in Hoboken and uh, don't always get to be on set. So it's great. To right. Hear. Well, I saw I I him. saw him there, you know, I, get, I sent him a little text, and he was like, "No, I'm I'm okay. Oh, okay I'm enjoying good. the talk." Yeah. Good <laughs> and then a partner in crime for you, Paul, uh, mm. uh, that is also here. Uh, oh. We'd like to bring her on, uh, Miss Danielle Obinger. Hello. Hey, hey Hi. Well, there you guys. How are you? Hi. Okay. Oh, good. So um, for people out there who don't know, the, uh, we're kind of going into the design and build and and fabrication part of our show here. Um, but Paul, I just, oh, go ahead, Jane. Can I just say something oh, before we start? Nation. If you're all a big fan of Puppet Heap's work, if you just go to their website, they sell puppets. And I have, this is mine that I got oh, when you were on the show last, the first time. So they're oh. brilliant puppets, so you can have one of your own. So go to puppetheap.com. There's a little plug. Well, for you. thanks for the shout out there. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, well, wow. great. Yeah, wow. please. It uh, makes the great weddings, parties, <laughs> great gifts any time of year. Yeah, yeah. really. Uh, um, but so, so I guess I just want to start because, you know, obviously time, right? So I wanted to maybe just start off with Penny's design because I think people love Penny. I mean, mm. so many people have just loved her. And I think it's one of those rare situations where the design and the character and the performance came together just like perfectly. You know, it doesn't happen mm. a lot. Um, <laughs> and so I just, I, I mean, I was just so thrilled that ultimately where we landed. But maybe, Paul, could you talk about a little bit like where... That because you designed Paul designed Penny, uh, and he's designed among many other characters over well, the years, of course. But where did that? Where? Where? Can you talk a little bit about her? I mean, the, the, uh, certainly the design of Penny was a very collaborative process. I mean, she evolved like all all puppets. Um, they evolve over time. You know, like you you. Um, uh, you know, like certainly any Muppet that you've seen has gone through many iterations over time uh, until they arrive at the sort of the character that we're familiar with and we're mm. uh, kind of in love with. Um, you know, even Kermit is not, you know, Kermit has gone through an evolution, you know, right. from being this like weird lizard thing uh, yeah. with like stumpy legs to like this well fleshed out character that we have now. And the, the yeah. thing about new characters is they don't always, they don't have that opportunity typically. There's no um, time to, to play with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you're like, you know, you, 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 you talk to executives about it. It's like, yeah, well, I mean, I want it to be, you know, lovable like animal lovable. It's like, well, <laughs> animals have been around a while, you know, like, and, All right. uh, you know, so um, what was cool about Penny was that you and I had a really early conversation, yeah. you know, about the character, you know, before even the before was really underway, right. you know. right. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I uh, worked on it a bit, and it was sort of like touch and go there for a while. Um, and then there was, you know, uh, a different approach had to be taken and all of those kinds of things. And then we, right. we got up into the point where it was like we were crank, we were design approvals weren't happening as fast as we needed them to get the puppet done. <laughs> to build so it we in time. Pushing, so people, yeah, we were right. pushing really hard to get it out. So um, it kind of, that, that turned into, I think, a good thing. The, for the character because if we were sort of locked into um something right off the bat and 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 sent it out i don't know that it would have gone through uh the kind of um uh input from from leslie and from you right. and all of, right. of, of jane of the actual and peter physical and... thing yeah, yeah yeah jane and peter um uh not of the design not right. the lines on paper, but of the physical object itself, right. which is what puppetry is all about. I mean, it's 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 an, it's performing objects, and it, so yeah. I think that was really good uh, for the character in the end. I mean, at the time, I was frustrated because like I wish we <laughs> like what, we I, have time to get it done. And I, I, I wish I could share that. It was great. I wish we could share that original design, and hopefully, we'll get approval to do that in another uh, episode or something. But. I mean, but but I guess I'm just talking about the initial kind of 
you know, we just talked about who, the, and yeah. like you said early on before, right? But we just talked about her, and then you just made this. I don't know. You got this in there, and the hair, and the like. <laughs> hair. It was amazing, you know. What? Where? Oh, where did, did she? Is there somebody in your life? Somebody that you saw? I mean, where do you draw your designs from? Is it I, just? Uh, you know, like it's. I don't know. They're just like. Um, uh, I don't. I mean, you know, you meet people, uh, you observe people, but they they kind of just. I don't know. I don't have specific people. They just kind of like. Right. They're just with me, you know, like people are just with me. <laughs> the voices and, uh, you mean. <laughs> yeah. You mean all the voices yeah. that you hear. <laughs> so, um, I'm talking here. So, but they're, no, they're, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it just, you just kind of, um, it's more of a, you know, for me, it's not like, um, it's not like I, I you know, see it, uh, you know, like you, like Gene, you know, it's like when you're drawing, it's not like, it's not like you're copying something out of your head. You mm -hmm. sort of, you sort of make a mark and you respond to it, and then you sort you've of got make some, another one. You've got some boundaries or some foundation things, and then it comes alive as that process yeah. is happening. Yeah. For me, for me, it's like it's the it's the material that does it. You know, like mm -hmm. it's the, even when I'm drawing, it's it's the paper and the pen. It's the um, or if I'm drawing digitally or whatever, it's the it's the it's the responding to what's in front of me. Um, and then I sort of see something in that and then, and then do it. it's not like in, it's not in my head. It's just, I right. have no idea. Like when you we talk about it, I'm like, I don't, I don't know like what right. it's going to be. And then right. you just sort of draw something and maybe you'll draw a pair of glasses or something and you'll respond to some, what goes around that. And, and yeah. like the hair is just sort of like, well, it, I don't know. It needs, it's not, it needs something. It needs some proportion. It needs some, something balance you know, or what right or imbalance really or imbalance you know, right if it's a character like where does the movement come from you know like right. the, how do you throw this off this way and it's just sort of responding to it physically like at puppet Eve, we're always um uh it's it's a little cliche now but we we say we think with our hands right we we, we think with stuff mm. you know we have if you come to the shop we have like walls and walls of, of drawers of just stuff because we're always playing with stuff and that's where the ideas come from right uh, and it's always, you know, there's a lot of, you'll see a lot of like puppets around the shop that are just made of junk we had laying around because we thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. You know, right. like, uh, like there'll be the, like right now there are a few. So, uh, Penny, yeah. Penny like certainly people. has her fans. And so Nick Kramer's great. I'm, I'm so, that's so gratifying. You know, oh my gosh. You don't know. You don't know how, how these things yeah. go, go over. Yeah. You know? and with someone like Penny, who is so specific to a certain program, have yeah. an opportunity to show up in other in other programs that i think so i think so i mean we've had uh the um the lawyer the the new uh the joe, what is he? joe the joe, lawyer he's done yeah. he's done, you know, joe from legal a, yeah joe from legal thank you daniel <laughs> uh yeah I, I think so you just never know right she could end up in I don't know, becoming Kermit's manager or something. Who knows mm -hmm. what could happen? Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, the Muppets, the Muppets have always had some kind of authoritarian <laughs> foil like that. Um, like right. uh, J.P. Gross, if you remember right. from the mm -hmm. very early seasons of The Muppet Show. You know, like, yep. she would be great. She would be great. And, so, and so much richer than that character, even. You know, like, she has such depth. And can I just say, too, just one little thing about... Um, and you hadn't really... We, we didn't know exactly who was going to be performing the character. No. Um, and so if anything, I was, when we were writing her, I would kind of do this, you know, little voice thing. And, uh, so we may yeah. have talked about it a little bit, but I mean, the fact that you created that, the design was built, everybody collaboratively builds this thing. And then Le Leslie gets it on and it just starts to go. It mm -hmm. was just amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. That's my favorite part really is, is seeing it, you know, that the minute that, it's a it's a living thing like the minute that you're um you're in the presence of another living thing yeah you know, when that happens it's like a, it, is, it is really like a lightning flash it just, mm -hmm. it just there's a certain point in the process where you're like aha like that. yeah right so look i just gave myself a you bubble. made a bubble <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Oh, yeah. um but but danielle so you Dan, you um work at, you're at part of puppet heap puppet and heap. you're the the muppet Coordinator? They call me the Muppet Coordinator. Right. And so I call her the Muppet Czar. The Czar. <laughs> Czar. So Danielle is the Muppet Czar. And and what are what can you talk a little bit about how you what what 
your involvement in this show more maybe in particular as opposed to? A, you know. a lot of, of what I did on this show involves um, knowledge and history of puppets and costumes that we have in storage, either in our shop or in a big storage facility. Right. And when you guys ask for something, initially they said, we're just going to use existing costumes. You know, so I shipped the costume, you know, Janice Floyd Zoo would have a box of costumes. But is it all me. catalog? I mean, how do you? Yeah, is this... I've cataloged it all. Yeah. Right. And plus, oh I have God. knowledge because I've been there at Henson for so long. But right. you guys would. Well, we've been. Know, well, it should be. It should be pointed out, though, that we we um, we have spent a long time. We've spent. Um, I mean, almost 20 years now to, um, yeah. cataloging and organizing yes. the entire history right. of everything. So uh, most of this stuff, you know, for the longest time, uh, it was the same group of people from the very beginning in Jim Henson's day, you know, working together. And all the information was just sort of in their heads, you know. Right. But then when it when when the Muppets moved over to Disney, to Disney and, right. they didn't have that advantage anymore. And right. Um, you know, so so really needed to be organized. And Danielle was one of the first people I called uh, <laughs> when when this gigantic pile of boxes just landed <laughs> on Puppet. <Bubby. laughs> a warehouse uh, of boxes. A warehouse, a warehouse of, right. we, wow. we that really hadn't been boxes. touched, right? In well, they shipped them from the, you know, yeah, they shipped them to us. Right. Yeah. So so Dan, I knew from working with Danielle for many years at, at uh, the Jim Henson Company. Um, I, I um, learned so much, you know, during my time there about the Muppets and the history of the Muppets. She was one of the first people I called to say, you know, like, help me go through all of this right. stuff. I don't know anybody who's more um, knowledgeable, you know, knowledgeable or organized. Oh, all right. A little right. impulsively organized. <laughs> It's, it's actually maddening. How many how many bow ties does Kermit have, Danielle? <laughs> how many? <laughs> Let me check the database. But right. anyway, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Danielle. But I just wanted I just wanted to say, you know, for you to say, oh, I just I just catalog it and ship it. It's it's no. way more than that. It's no, very no, no. years it's, behind it, that. It's so, part yeah. part of what they said initially on this, which was really interesting, is they didn't want to build any costumes except the finale. They were going to build finales, and they knew right. that. But then we would get these scripts from you guys in California, and it's like. They want what? Everybody needs <laughs> yeah. to look like 1964 Beatles, all matching costumes. Wait a minute. Yeah. Animal <laughs> needs five fashionista looks now. Yeah. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. Uh, I've got to dress Tina, or we have to dress Tina and Gerald from scratch. Right. So it's a matter of like picking and, and finding, penny. knowing the database, penny, knowing their yeah. bodies, finding them, running them by the costume designer. Will this work? Switch it around a little bit. So it's all those elements plus the whole New York, LA thing, which drives me out of my mind, is oh. we're three hours ahead of you. So right. when you guys are having your lunch meetings, we're almost out the door for the day. Right. So there's that 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 crazy, what do they want? Tomorrow? What? Wait. <laughs> so that <laughs> plays into the whole thing, too. And then does that apply to uh, like prop type stuff as well? Or is it or just more do you deal with more of the the puppets and the costumes? It's and... more puppets and costumes for me because right. mostly if they're not touching the prop, you know, if it's yeah. not a purse or a, a stick or a telephone, it's right. probably L.A. prop people. Got it. With that. And then can we talk about... Yeah, we about... usually only deal with props if they're... Um, they're... If it, they need to be puppeteered Touch. in some way. And sure, rigged sure. for the puppet. Yeah, you know, some right. special... But there are stuff. I mean, there are things in boxes, right, from over the years that you... Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, of course. There's yeah. lots of stuff. Um, but just bringing up Tina and Gerald... Um, Danielle, can you or, or either one of you talk about um, their designs? And actually, can I just show just a quick photo of your friend? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> we, we shouldn't leave her out, but this is Lauren Atanello. Hey. Uh, I just, I, this picture, I, I didn't have this. I just found it, but it's funny that Pepe is there. Um, this is the, this is the day they caught Pepe in the ocean and he wasn't dressed or even alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, he but, couldn't even speak then. Yeah, you know, he was yeah, not he English was just, anyway. Not English. Yeah. No. Yeah. Was, yeah, was, but can you talk insane. about Lauren's involvement in this show? I mean, I know she's oh, done sure. so many things, and she's been like Danielle, a part of the Muppets for so long, and you, Paul, of course. But um, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Her? They, they certainly Danielle and Lauren have been um, a part of the Muppets for much longer. You know, I was enjoying them on television as a kid when they were making that stuff happen. So um, you know, certainly um, uh, Lauren was another person that I had spent a lot of time with um, working alongside uh, while I was at uh, the Jim Henson company. Um, uh, but Lauren was more involved in uh, publishing and, and marketing and licensing and stuff like that. Right. So that was great. 
um, when uh, we were charged with uh, managing the Muppets, one of the things you realize is that um, it's kind of hard to keep them on brand, mm. uh, you know, to keep the design consistent. Like every time uh, you repair or build a puppet, something about it changes and you need to have some kind of a touchstone uh, reference, which is really what I thought would be kind of the boring part of the job was really somewhat the most interesting uh, yeah. was the sort of um, the sort of forensics of design sort of going right. back uh, over history and uh, making sure like what, you know, like Gonzo is looking kind of weird. Like what is, you know, he's changed a lot over the years. Like you talk about that evolution. Right. And so to be conscious about that and sort of point it out, um, you know, to you, the performers, to um, the executives at uh, Disney and their art directors and to be able to communicate with them and say, look, look, there are differences between, you know, what, what character are we trying to land on here? You know, because they yeah. all have sort of a different feel. And Gonzo is yeah. a good one to point out because it was so dramatic, the change. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, he went from this little like uh, kind of guy <laughs> up to like this kind of like crazy outgoing um, character. It was a right. big, it was a big emotional um, uh, change over the over the decades. Yeah. Um, and so Lauren has been really critical, and um, she's very she's like her her hyper analytic rays are so sharp. You know that like she sees every little thing. It's also maddening, but it's great. Right. Uh, it's just exactly what we need. And um, so, so it was particularly with the Mayhem characters, um, she had uh, sort of hyper-analyzed them. And uh, we kind of, um, you know, tried to bring them to their ideal selves, you know. Yeah. Um, you know. Well, uh, because you had to create them. two new yeah, two ones. Two of them, yeah. Two matching. Right? Two matching. Yeah. So people know, uh, you know, they're... Not all characters have doubles, right? But mm -hmm. um, for this show, we knew because we were, we've talked about block shooting throughout this thing, but we knew that we needed to be able to alternate and switch out puppets based on their wardrobes. And so we needed you guys to create two new characters. And so, yeah, yeah. she was part of make, making sure that we were in the right place yeah, yeah. Right, as as well particularly models. when you're when you've got two new ones at the same time they have to be interchangeable they have to be identical so that right if you even if you cut to another one to a different puppet you, it would still look it's like the same character. consistency right so that's right. um that's a challenge but with with um with um the Dr. teeth Keith's parents um yeah so so dan yeah um uh lauren uh designed those those two characters yeah you know she um kind of uh we, t I mean, you know, Lauren and I, we do work together um, on design, um, right. but uh, mainly you, you know, you, you end up taking on, you know, once you get into the, into the zone of your character, you're kind of, yeah. Um, but did yeah, you, and did also, we, did you guys work a little bit together on, on uh, the baby, baby animal? Was that also? A yeah, we did. Yeah. We, well, we, yeah, we definitely um, passed designs around a little bit. Um, right. Here That's and there, great. You know, to try to get it. Yeah. So. That was great. And, and um, uh, uh, you know, we were, uh, I think, I think even uh, Danny Iglesias um, threw in a little bit with uh, Baby Animal, I think. I think oh, right. A little, yes. Little, little, uh, some drawing over the drawings that we did to kind of get. And she was involved with fluffier. costume as well, right? As far as some, some of the. She um, did the costume selection in LA for day to day. Got yeah. it. Got it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We Again, were utilizing was... the existing wardrobe. Yes. And then, yeah, the, the whole process was a long, there was a long process, like sort of pre-production process that we, we kind of went through. So there were a lot of contributors. Yeah. And then what were some of the adjustments that were made to Penny, you think, once she came to LA? Like, I know, I know some of it was about getting it to f feel right for, for Leslie. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think, like you were saying, there's always kind of, you know, until you find, right, there's always little things that maybe yeah. get picked I think up. Sorry, go Peter may be able to speak to this better because he was in L.A. That's true. And he and, was oh, doing we have him. And he was there ripping her apart and putting her back together. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> once but we I send think... her out the door, it's like magic. It's like, is she okay? Is she good? Did they like her? Uh, Peter's are, well, you know. You know. You know what I right. liked about it though? The what happened was what I think when when um when Peter was working on that out in LA, she ended up being more true to the original design. Like I think we we because a lot of times when you, you design a character on paper and it gets built, especially when you're on a schedule, 
you end up making some sacrifices to the design just because of the practicality of the mm-hmm. build. It's like, well, right. I can, you know, this is what I can do physically. You know, I know you drew that thing on paper, but it's just lines on paper until we actually right, do right. the thing. And then, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I don't have much time and we're a little over budget. Like, just, uh, okay. And like, as we're good. And as you said, yeah. we didn't have our puppeteer yet and we couldn't have a fitting with the puppeteer because right. for a brand new puppet, we often do a fitting. How's the grip? Does this feel good? Can you stand up? Is this too heavy? We had none of that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. Because she, she ended up wearing, she ended up wearing, I think, my backpack for a little while Ooh. at first. Right. Because oh, she, she needed. Have. Yeah. yeah that is. That's the, what we sent out there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's all those adjustments that have mm-hmm. to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But it was cool. <laughs> like, I think, it, I think once it got out there, um and uh, peter was working on it a little bit more i sort of steered it back to that that like little, little pierced purse yeah kind of design right. that we had but i was happy yeah. about that i was uh, yeah. ultimately very pleased with how she came out Sp- speaking of uh maybe we should bring on mr mckenna he's All here right. actually Yay. Gene, awesome. you got it. I want to bring on Peter. And hey, sorry, Peter. while we're at it, hey, Peter. Hey. But while we're at it, let's also hey, bring on our prop master for the show to join you guys. Yay. Bethany Barton is here. Woohoo! Hey, hey. hey, hey gang. Hey, hey Bethany, Bethany, how are you? Good. I'm at LA Comic Con. <laughs> oh. How cool. How cool. Multitasking. That's wow. awesome. I'm in a Peter. I'm at a I'm at a holiday party in a friend's bedroom. Nice. <laughs> Man, you guys are so cool. Yeah. Thank you for home. doing it. Thank you for joining us. We know it was all last minute, but we appreciate you coming. But Peter, we were just talking about uh, Penny's design and having her coming over finally to L.A. And just about to talk about what kind of uh, work you ended up doing on her to get her to the place where she landed, ultimately. Where she landed. Yeah. Um, yeah well, um I think we, you know, there was, there was sort of like, there was a fair, there was a fairly long laundry list of, uh, of things to accomplish with her. Um, we made her mouth bigger. I remember that was sort of the chief, that's sort of the first thing because it was the thing that determined a lot of the other considerations. Um, right. But, but also you know, still somehow you maintained her little purse, even though the design of even her little, the way she, her little tiny mouth talked, it, it doesn't look like it got bigger. But did, was it about no. becoming a little more malleable or something for Leslie or something? Um, yeah, um, I mean Leslie did an amazing job, and you know, obviously, we having her there was a huge, huge advantage. You know, right. Once, once we actually had her like on a daily basis yeah. to come in and make yep. things, so we'd tinker with it, you know, for a few hours after she left, and sort of try to get it to a point where it was working better and. Some yeah. some overnights that worked and some that didn't so well. Um, <laughs> one of the things we did have to do was we had to make a um, we had to create sort of a, a plate inside the head in order to balance her hand just to take the weight of the thing because she was having a really hard time oh, doing wow. the mouth and supporting the weight of the head. Um, right. And we also changed the way that she, her hand went into the head so it came in like sort of more at a. At, at an angle then sort of like directly up from the bottom. Yeah. If I recall correctly, we sort of changed the grip angle pretty considerably. And that made it, that made, that was, I think probably the one, the one thing that really made the biggest difference. Right. Um, and, and not having, so. and like on the teeth, Dr. T's parents, I mean, really no chance to have any fittings really. I think, uh, Lauren, uh, we were just emailing a little bit. She had mentioned that maybe Stephanie got to go and, Yes. Try Tina. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. yeah she no, she did. She. We were roaring. We were falling on the floor laughing when she got <laughs> that. Oh, yeah. That was, that was but those characters, they came out great. Those designs are beautiful. And actually, can I just, something about Tina, just while we're talking about the, Peter, your design, I mean, Paul, your design of the eyes in the glasses, uh, I just love it so much. You know, it's that scooter thing, right? Yeah. In a way. Yeah. It's so funny. So cool. It's just such great attitude, you know. Oh, uh, I just Everybody love likes. that. I love that so much. Um, so, uh, Bethany, obviously you're here, but I, I, I guess I was hoping we'd have you guys on together because I don't think people realize um, the specificity of props for Muppets and what you guys have to do 
to communicate, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this, right? This can you speak to like what the difference is between, you know, a traditional kind of props, which we do use, right, on this show as well. But how is it how is it different with the Muppets? Oh, so different. That's what's wonderful about you being one of the writers, because you understood how different that was. Um, mm. But I think for people who are a little newer to it, like I love Adam and he would write something in the morning and I'd be like, okay, but real quick, he's a puppet and he doesn't have hands. <laughs> so I know that you want him yeah. to flip an egg right now, but what do you want this to look like? Because we <laughs> have to make this happen in a way that humans don't do that. <laughs> yeah, he can't really, they can't really do that, Adam. They're... Yeah, he yeah. And then he would get delighted, like, ooh, how are we going to do it then? <laughs> uh, I'm making it up as we speak so well you know that's probably my fault too because i would always say in the writer's room i'd say don't think about parameters don't think about if they can do it or not let's just create yeah and then i'll be the naysay guy and we'll talk about it later but let's see if we can just throw out the most fun idea and i think as we started shooting and there was still stuff that had to be created right um they forgot <laughs> about that they forgot that somebody <laughs> needed somebody needed to reel it in a little bit. <laughs> no, we had a blast. But yeah, it's all about weight and scale and mm -hmm. you know can can we rot it? Can it be done with a magnet? Can it be yeah, it's it's a different language to think in. I'm really lucky that I started props with Brad Elliott, who used to be in Muppet Workshop. Right. And he taught me that language and now I speak in it but um <laughs> it is really funny to see people walk in and be like what do you mean I can't hand this six pound thing to that puppet and you're like oh right. no <laughs> but you, it's always a, it's a problem to be solved it's fun yeah especially you, because I said I said to Bill the other day I think like as a workshop, we delegated like every prop item that we could to your department. <laughs> you know, off, yes. often we're, you know, often the rule of thumb yeah. with wrangling is like if a Muppet holds it, it's a Muppet prop. But, you know, because of a number of things on the production, the way things kind of worked out, you know, we were kind of scrambling and it was like, okay, well, right now we need to put Penny back together. And so, <laughs> you know, so we need you to build like, you know, six helmets for the characters, uh, for the band. <laughs> You know, oh or whatever God. it was. Oh, those yeah. things. Yes. The, we, the we, dead we, mouse helmet. Yes, the dead mouse helmet. Oh, my yeah. God. Those were amazing. The other thing, they were so the other fun. Thing about, <laughs> well, the other thing that was really great about those was that Bethany worked on them with, with uh, uh, somebody else who was collaborating, and they did these beautiful heads, and that we got them, and we had to kind of make them so that the puppets could actually go inside and you know, they were supported and could be in there. And um, we discovered that they'd all been made out of styrofoam, which of course is barge, which is, you know, the adhesive that we use for just about everything, like eat styrofoam. Eats it up. So we couldn't use the one glue that we use for everything to like, <laughs> secure anything to the inside of them. Uh, so that was an interesting challenge. But, but, but do we, Peter, out. am I remembering wrong, but didn't we end up not putting their heads in those heads and we just grabbed... Yeah, they put a handle or something. in the middle of them and they became their own. I think we were going to yeah. do that, right? And then I think we, we thought we wouldn't be able to hold those up with the puppet yeah, so heads. Yeah, think... we ended up taking the heads off everybody, except for I right. think we had to do it with Janice because her head wouldn't come off. Oh, um, maybe Janice stayed. Yeah, I right, think Janice. Right, right. So, yeah, it was, you know, but it was it was a real collaboration. And, and I mean, you know, um, Bethany and her crew like knocked it out of the park, so. We were just like, oh, thank God we didn't have to build those from scratch. <laughs> I have, a, que I have a, a question for Bethany. Bethany, here's a question for you from Joss Hankemeyer. Uh, where did you get the box of crunchy stars, Nora? <laughs> did, you, uh, did you just reprint the image and put it on the cereal box, or did you have the real one from somewhere? First of all, I believe that this is actually Jeff Yorks using a fake name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Crunchy Stars, we scoured the internet um, for people who had, you know, old boxes of it and had scanned it and had taken pictures of it. And then we went in and um, Studio Graphics at SAT, they painfully traced over everything. And I got to pick like, oh, I want this maze on the back because we just painfully recreated it all 
and then printed them and then maybe accidentally printed extra ones. That's why I think this is Jeff York's. <laughs> right. Oh, no, no, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> is there just uh, just to uh, stay on the props just a, uh, again? But is there something that you made that we ended up not using, or you know, a, a prop that um, you thought, oh, maybe this won't make it in, and it did, or anything like that? Something a favorite of yours? So many things get made yeah. and then not used, right. and then you're yeah on to the next crisis but um <laughs> right i don't know i think the um the vr goggles oh um, i remade those so many times because i'm a psychopath um <laughs> i just didn't like how they looked and then you know um we'd put them on puppets or and i just so I, it ended up me like I feel like hours before in the truck making them for like the fourth time because I was like, they're not right. Oh my um, gosh. But that's just because I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys, can we just go around? I'm just curious. Uh, favorite episodes or moments from the show? Once, 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 you know, now you've hopefully got a chance to watch them. Uh, yes, Danielle, anything. I love the scene. I lost it with Animal talking to the the career counselor, and every oh. time they flipped to a different moment, I lost it. We were sitting in the shop watching them at lunchtime. <laughs> we all sit in the shop and watch the shows at lunchtime, and I lost it. I literally fell off the stool. I was laughing so hard. Is that Ben, ben Schwartz? Schwartz is that what's the name? Oh, yeah. Schwartz? Brilliant. It was brilliant. Was brilliant. So I just between both the, the actor and Animal, I was just. They were brilliant together. It yeah, was the like, editing. It was like that, Laurel and Hardy or Abbott because they were perfect together. And the editing, the timing of that, the way it's edited is beautiful. But in on the day, Bethy, I don't know if you were standing in that room or not at the time, but they were just oh unbelievable my together. We they could have made have an hour-long movie of them. Yeah. Yeah. They were so funny. They could have gone all day long. Mm -hmm. It was so good, mm -hmm. so funny. How about you, Paul? Anything? Oh, gosh, I liked a lot of things. I mean... Well, I mean, I remember early on, I liked the moment in the script and I liked how it came out in the show was uh, after they did, um, can you picture that? Yeah. Like, they, like it just seems like, oh, okay, you know, can you picture, oh, we love that song, whatever. But then the punchline of that is hilarious. Like, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> what have you done to my house? <laughs> <laughs> and then they switch down like, that's the shack. Anyway, that's a great, that's a great gag. That really, um, uh, really took that. I like, I like when we can, um, take sort of well-known tropes and things like that from the, from the Muppets and then level them up a little bit. So, right, right. That, that was a great moment. Yeah, yeah I like that yeah. too. How about you, Peter? Uh, I think the whole uh, desert uh, hallucination sequence the, uh, oh. show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was, was a real high point for me. Um, I was expecting to see uh, something that got cut out of it, um, which was the Jabberwocky. Um, oh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. uh, which we had sort of refurbed and sent out. And I was like, and, and then Jurgen had sent me a, a little video on his phone when they actually shot it. Cause I yeah. Right. So I was like really excited to see it and then it wasn't in the show. But the other part of it that was kind of great was that um, we had also done the um, dilated eyeballs for lips. <laughs> yeah. Um, where, you, where you actually see a pupil for the first time. And his eyes I open. have to be honest, I didn't think it was going to really work. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, it was great. It was really great. So I, yeah, was I great. agree. I wasn't sure either. I, I wasn't a big fan of the idea. But uh, Jeff and, and Adam, they really wanted to see his eyes open. And uh, once we saw it with the, our, our effects team doing, making it happen, and it looked great. It was really great. It, was it really worked. Great. It totally worked. So that was yeah. great. Yeah. Bethany, how about you? Any? Oh, go ahead. Oh, Danielle, you Who's did. No. Oh, Danielle did. Okay. Sorry. Oh, I did. I did the the yeah. animal and the career counselor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, first. And the first. career counselor yeah. was one of my favorites. But honestly, towards the end of the series, when the band has their Mad Max on the bus moment and it comes oh. up over the hill, so like you know, we see this stuff all day long, and you don't always get the goosebumps. But truly, when that bus arrived in the moment and like turn it was like turning around for in base camp to go back oh yeah i turned into a six-year-old and i was like oh the bus is here i mean i've seen the bus <laughs> so many times i'd like 
butyled stuff to the bus, but then it was there, and I got really excited. So seeing it in the show gave me all the feels, because right. I'm a fan, too. Yeah. How about the snake? Did you love the snake on location when they had the, mm, the rattlesnake? That was a good one. Not as much. Do you remember that? <laughs> we were we were at the in that scene where they come up in the bus to find uh, Nora on the side of the road. We were shooting on the side of the road there, out in the wherever we were, and uh, we're about to roll. And everybody's down. We're all sitting on the ground. The characters are up, and <laughs> this little rattlesnake, not so little, just decides to come to us. No oh fear. God. Not worried about <laughs> anybody. And they everybody was like. Uh, right away, whoa, everybody <laughs> like got up and ran away. <laughs> oh, and we, we realized why we had a wrangler, a snake wrangler, with us all the time. It was like, came in handy. Wow. I just wanted to meet Dr. T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Big fan. Uh, Nobody so, loves me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so my, uh, guys, I think was, we're going to say thank you. Before, I, before you go, I just want to, Bethany, are you there for your books? No, I spoke on the Props of Star Wars panel. Okay, I, didn't know I, want people to, I want people to know that Bethany is a brilliant <laughs> author and illustrator of children's books, and we yeah. walk in similar, similar worlds. So if you want to plug where people can see and take oh. a look at your books. Yeah. Wherever fine books are sold, I make, uh, I have eight books of Penguin Random House. I'm trying to love spiders. Uh, I'm trying to love math. My newest one is I'm trying to love germs. There's hilarious picture books that journey yes. into the world of STEM. I'm and trying to love one? rattlesnake. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. rattlesnakes. Well, future. I planted that rattlesnake. Oh, I mean. Oh. 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 Don't don't I don't forget trying to love Muppet Workshop. Don't forget that yeah. one. <laughs> I will never write that book. No, I'm just is there a, <laughs> no, that's a, that's a tough one. That's is there a, a BethanyBarton.com? Oh yes, there is. Okay. Go visit and I'm it. on the Instagrams as Bethany Barton. The Instagram. The Instagrams. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, you. everybody. Thanks for taking the time on thank your you. Sundays. Thank you. Thank you. It's a blast. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. for you. letting us make yeah. a Muppet show. Love you guys. I'll see you in the next season when we start shooting the next season. I'll see Second you season. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Oh, it's okay. Thank bro. you, guys. <laughs> <You're open. laughs> okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Great to see everybody. Bye. All right, boy. Oops, now I have to take them out of this one. Okay. Oh, yes. There's All right, we've got there. some more friends coming on, and one more um, group of, of people, talented people yes. to bring on. Well, they're not They're not very talented. Yeah, well, I have people. Okay. Yeah, this next group filler. is really They're like people. filler. Yeah. yeah, they're just people. Um. Matter of fact, Rachel I mean, is, one, in, one in particular, I don't even know why he's here or what he does, but let's bring him on first. Uh, Jürgen Ferguson, let's bring him on, Gene. Look, why is he here? His audio isn't on. We can't even hear him laughing. Look, he's frozen. Turn your mic. There you, go. there we <laughs> go. Hi. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm already proving your point. I should not be here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to turn on a microphone. Hey guys, good. how are you doing? We're good. Nice to thank you. you for thanks for coming here. I, I guess this is yeah, for Gene's first time. Hello. Yeah, hello. Nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, this is maybe the only oh. time too, Gene. I yeah. wouldn't make okay. it a regular. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. good oh. knowing you. Good morning. You're you're freezing up just a little bit. So in case in case like you think we're delayed or something or we're responding late, it's just freezing everyone. So hopefully it'll just get better as we go. But it's better now. Yeah. Better now. Okay. Yeah. Don't move. Um, well, don't move. Yeah, don't say anything and don't move. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All, right, All right, let's bring on another friend of the workshop. Miss Rachel is here. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, hi. Rachel Burson. Thanks for Hello. having me. Hi, hi, hi. Thanks she for got being really here. excited. I could see her in the green room getting really excited when you mentioned the rattlesnake. Oh, oh yeah, because Russ and I were the ones who found it, and I, I, well, you guys, the main, I, yeah, Russ saw it, and I was like, Russ, wait a second. He was like, "There's a snake," and I was like, "Oh my god!" And he, like, <laughs> he watched it come out of the hole, and I went to main channel before we ran, and I was like, "Guys, I know I'm not supposed to be on this channel, but there's a rattlesnake coming straight for the cast." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and then that's everything amazing. Activated. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, was... <laughs> speaking of Russ, 
Here he is, Mr. Russ Walco. Hello. Hey. Hello. Yes. Hey. And, to, and to add to your, your snake story. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. And I didn't have my walkie on me, which is my bad. But Rachel did. But <laughs> so she called it. And she's quietly calling it in. You guys were shooting the scene unaware. And I'm going... <laughs> snake guys, I, I came up with some sign language for snake. I said, <laughs> and You're the only one that knows the sign language, it doesn't count. And then the, the people with the buckets came moseying down the hill, and they let you shoot like the whole tank before they're before they, they said, stopped it, before they and told then the us. Snake people came in, and then you're like, Oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah. yeah, of course, yeah, let it keep, let it keep going. Oh my god, well, thank you for coming and doing this, guys. Um. Really appreciate it. So people know, uh, I, I hate to just put one name or one title with it because you guys do so many things, but um, you are what uh, the Muppet Workshop refers to as a Muppet Wranglers. Is that correct? Is that fair to say wrangling? But I don't yeah. think people really know what that entails because it sounds like one duty of some kind. But um Maybe like you've got lassos or something, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe hey, Jurgen, maybe you could yeah. speak to what? Hmm. Yeah, let me ask you this: What is it? What's a typical day on the Muppet Mayhem set when you've got all characters working? Like, from what time do you have to be there till the end of the day? And guys, feel free to chime in, of course. But let me just start Absolutely. it with Jurgen. Where do we? What happens? Uh, I usually try to get an hour or two up to two hours ahead of call time just so I can go through the day's script, go through the schedule, check on continuity with the costumes. And if there's anything that we think we're going to need, go ahead and get it to set before we forget it when we're on set. Hmm. Hmm. So that's that usually starts today. And then by all means, grab breakfast because you're not yeah. going to have time to eat <laughs> once it gets okay. close to call time. Wow. Uh, and can I just and, jump in just can I just jump in for a yeah, quick sure. second? Um, does everybody tend to get there that early, or do you seem to be the one who comes the earliest? <laughs> You're gonna live I, there. I yeah. think it's just it's just yeah. me, I'm afraid. I, no one is required and no one asks. I just do it because it's the quiet time. It's the time I can think. Ah, yeah. right. And because Jurgen does it, we don't have to. So it's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Russ, Russ, where are you right yes. now? Uh, I'm in my home workshop. Okay, it's his workshop, and it's it's kind of a mess. But the, sometimes this is how the shop at Muppets ends up looking—just part, <laughs> parts and bodies you, and things everywhere. He builds beautiful things. Mm -hmm. uh, also, wait, while we're on sets or not sets, settings, someone's asking uh, Rachel, "What's that picture behind you?" They're saying it kind of suspiciously, like it might be something. Yeah. So, uh, weirdly enough, I'm at the carriage house right now in New York, and oh, so wow. this is, this is an, a, 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 a painting that Elmo did of his family in my friend's office. So oh. that's a weird. That's probably the weird like thing you're seeing that keeps showing up. So, oh, okay. my sweet. hair wasn't big enough to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Okay. But sorry, so you, sorry to just jump up, but Jurgen, can you continue on then as far as? Like, oh, no, so what's now? So so we're getting ready to shoot a scene, maybe, or or wherever you want to pick up. Well, I, I'd yeah, like to no, I, that. Go that for I it. think the day doesn't start with the day. The day starts with the end of the day before. We don't leave the night until we're ready with everything for that first shot the next day. Hmm. So you're there earliest and you leave latest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're like PAs. I know it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's crazy. So, so, um, so sorry, Jurgen. So, so, what's the next? Let's say well, we're going to do the, the rooftop Go scene ahead. where they're going to perform. Let's say it's one of those okay. kind of scenes. Oh well, if we've been really good and everyone's on their game and you've been involved, hopefully all the holes through the roof, everything, and the holes if they're in chairs or wherever the puppets are seated. That's already been cut and done. So we don't even have to worry about that. All we need to do is make sure the puppets are out on stage in their proper place setting. And uh, you know, then it's, you know, keep keep the hair out of the eyes to make sure the costumes are straight. If they have to have an instrument, you know, how does the puppeteer want it, you know, positioned or how how long are the rods? 
uh, yeah. because you like, if they're working under the stage, it's a little more difficult. And so mm. we, we, we have full body, give them the body. best option. Yeah, it, it, it really helps to talk to the puppeteer and say, look, what, what's your range of motion that you want? We'll try to accommodate. Right. Yeah. And, and then, then uh, we'll usually start with, with our preconceived notion of how it'll work. But once we get in there and you guys are in there with us, you know, you're the ones that fine tune it all and being like, oh, actually, yeah. no, let's not put the rod this way. Let's do the rod that way. And we'll make all the adjustments according to the performers of what they need. But we try and anticipate as much as we can ahead of time what you want. And hopefully we succeed. Well, that's know, that's, that's, what's, that's what's amazing to me, because it is inevitable that as prepared as you guys are and you are incredibly prepared, there's always something, isn't there? There's always there's a there's a lamp in the way that the this we can't have him holding this on this side of his body now and it has to move to the other so it's about okay now we need time to do that and everybody goes oh what's taking the workshop so long and you guys get blamed because now we're waiting <laughs> we're waiting and it's not your fault right yeah. One of the, one of the biggest things I find is like if, I, if the first AD comes up and they're worried about a scene and is this going to take long, guys? I mean, seriously, are you ready to do this? And right. all I can ever say is we are correct in guessing what the puppeteers want about fifty percent of the time. So <laughs> could be a good day, could be a bad day. So <laughs> you're, you're, you know, you can yell at us all you want, but uh, right. sometimes puppeteers going to want to change it, and that's your prerogative. Right. Right. And it's and. and you you know again it's like uh the time right is time is money and so you do it as fast as possible i mean it's amazing sometimes how quickly you guys do this stuff and people don't realize what it takes to secure it's not like oh okay let's just switch it to the other hand it's you're also thinking about and tell me if this is true but i believe this is true is like it has to stay there it can't just be right you can't just say oh this should work Right. You have to kind of make sure that it's going to stay for take after take after take. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And even changes as simple as you would think, like, well, let, let you know, Zoot's going to be holding his sax in this uh, shot. And then, oh, no, actually, he's not holding his sax. OK. So what that involves <laughs> is unpinning his suit so we can get to his elbows. I mean, his shoulders pulling off the, the hands that are permanently attached to the saxophone. Actually, only once permanently attached. Mm -hmm. We, we rip his arms out. We put new arms in. One of the hands that was attached, we have to unstitch, put it back in, fasten his shoulders together, put his suit back on so he looks all pretty, mm -hmm. make sure he's got the arm rods in, whatever they need to be. So it's not just, right. you know, they're puppets. It's not just let the sacks go. It's, it's right. a whole deal. Right. And and, um, and dealing with Dave Goals is a big issue. So. <laughs> That's really the biggest problem. Uh, that's the, that's <laughs> no, the but he's so entertaining. <laughs> he's so entertaining. The stories. Is Rachel? Is there a um, a, a particular? Oh, we'll just talk about the band. Uh, is there a particular band member that uh, is more involved as far as changing over costume or prepping than another? So that's fun because Floyd is difficult because he wears layers. So Floyd requires like at least two shirts a hat like pants the whole thing and that's the whole thing uh, but the most difficult i found was dr teeth just oh. because of the way that he's built and that l200 body and you have to get in there and he's got clips that you have to unplug and like and you've got to deal with those um blinky arms so dealing with the arms hooking on the live hands getting the cuffs right getting the getting a shirt on shimming the shirt through like getting the right neckerchief on like getting the hat right that cummerbund, oh my gosh, yeah. And like getting the custom cummerbunds made was a thing. And then like, and so yeah, he was, he, there was an order to do it. And if you did not do that order right, you had to start from scratch. <laughs> and when you're right. moving fast, you would always find out way too late. But yeah, I think Dr. Teeth, because he required the most pieces and was the most oddly shaped. Yeah, much like the performer, yeah. the most difficult to <laughs> <The dress. laughs> Yeah, I'm very difficult to dress. Uh, <laughs> But but also, um, I don't think people realize that, depending on which which puppet it is, but that the the characters' heads have long sleeves attached mm. to them that we go in through to get to the head, and those sleeves go in through the hole in the body, 
and different people need it kind of secured in a sense in different places, right? Some like it a little tighter, some need it a little. So it's all very specific to that, right? Jurgen, is that a fair? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause you know, with over the day, as we shoot, sometimes the fat gets hot, it's getting sweaty and it starts to stretch. So you're constantly having to keep an eye and then readjusting the head. And, or if the costume is like Dr. T, if the, if the costume was heavy, like that, that one coat that had all the yeah. fringe that was so heavy, oh, yeah. his neck right. would start to stretch. Right. So, right. Yeah. You got to keep an eye on that, on the neck length. And you guys uh, know? trying to pin, oh, I was, I was no, sorry, trying go ahead, to please. pin, <laughs> oh, no, I was say, as far as the costumes go, especially with like Floyd or Zoot, they have pants and, you know, the little button, I mean, they're intricate little pants with their zippers and buttons and belts. And the pin that holds their head together is underneath. And it's like, are you going to take the time to have to undo all the pants stuff to get, or, oh my you know, God. To, get to that pin? Or you try to walk through his pants leg and do some invasive pinning while keeping him clothed. Right. So, oh yeah, and yeah. when you're on the, the taunt clock, it's hard. And the new uh, thing we added uh, for this show in particular was the, yeah. the leg, leg stumps. Oh, because, the leg uh, stumps. What are leg stumps? What, <laughs> the puppets were, you know, they were trying they were covering them pretty good you can get a lot more waste than you would than they used to do i suppose because yeah. before we would have pant pant skirts right pant tubes right that would yep. feel like pant pants tubes. but you would just see a, a belt but you know matt is a tall guy and he was playing floyd nice and tall but because jane you know the brilliant jane she is she's yes. like i can see their pant legs and they're empty she's like we got to do something about this right. so from that moment on once james realized that we, you know, not only are on set with the puppets, we had to go back to the shop on our off time and make these leg stumps off the patterns that existed, but on the fly with what we had. And those live from hips down to knee so that in the mm -hmm. instance you catch too much of the puppet, you can feel their legs a little bit better visually. And a crotch, mm -hmm. right? Kind of like a crotch leg. You're catching mm -hmm. what would be there. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. All right. Did the amazing Jane Gutnick, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, can I? Yeah. No, I was just gonna. Were you done with that thought? Because I brought this up prematurely. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about the refurbishing process with the puppets? Ooh. Well, Russ, I know it, you had to do a lot of repairs. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, you might be most, good at explaining that was, one. I was gonna say most of what was done for this show was done at the at Heath at the I shop. I was gonna say time. that. That question mm -hmm. could have been helpful just a little bit earlier in our previous mm -hmm. puppet heap section. But yeah, but uh, there, there reminds me of a, one of my favorite moments from the set, which was yeah. uh, it's a Jurgen story to tell, with uh, the wonderful Mr. Morgan Freeman when he had to work with the bunnies. Oh yeah, the, the bunnies that were the original bunnies from the Muppet Show because they're oh my just those bunnies have been fur, everywhere. So they lasted yeah. forty years. Yeah, crazy. But Jurgen, what did he say when uh, you asked him to pick out a bunny? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, because at one point he's supposed to be holding a bunny. So we were like, would you like to hold on to your bunny? And he just kind of looked at me and and I'm like, you can pick which one. And I'm trying to, what was it? He he made some comment about. He's what? like, I, I don't I care. You're the expert. And then, uh, and then Jurgen's like, well, you know. These bunnies are over 40 years old. They're the originals from the Muppet Show. And then his response was like, it looks like it. <laughs> he was disgusted. <laughs> like, that These are old and disgusting, but okay, give me a stupid bunny to hang on to. <laughs> yeah, he just he gave me a look like you have got to be kidding me, kid. What what, what are you giving me here? <laughs> well, and that that was the end of that scene where everybody's come down as zoots and all that. And the bunnies have been jumping around and everybody was supposed to take like a bunny and leave. Right. So everybody yeah. kind of got a bunny and <laughs> yeah, I was trying to let one. him pick his own bunny, but he didn't seem too thrilled about Wasn't any of them. It. So he didn't give it crap. Yeah. <laughs> who, um, who do you guys think is the most gullible, uh, workshop wrangler, um, on the set? <laughs> uh, I think Jurgen will do whatever you tell him. You think it's him? yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
too. That's my favorite. I love, oh. I love, I like some morning we come in and I, I would say to Jurgen, Dr. Teeth just caught on fire. We're going to need it. He would be like, what? No. <laughs> and he'd run into the set. <laughs> yeah. You got me a matter. few times actually. <laughs> right. Yeah. We got you. But, but admittedly, right. You, you have that, you, you know that about yours, right. You told me like your family even can mess with you sometimes, right. You, you're uh, like easily. I, I take it at point where if you tell me something, I just believe it. If you said, Oh, the moon's, you know, going to fall into the earth tomorrow, I believe you because things happen. So yeah, when you say a puppet's caught on fire, I have been yeah. in situations where puppets were on fire from past shows. Right. So I'm gonna believe you. Right. I think a I think a bird just flew into your room. Oh yeah. Jorgen Jorgen? There's a bird in the background of your uh, it just flew there. through the door. You're again. Look. again. You froze oh, again. He's froze. <laughs> no. Wait, you oh! did? <laughs> no, because I've had a bird in my damn apartment before. <laughs> no, oh, crap, not again. It's going to take a bird to catch it. What? Uh, what? My what? God, I'm going for it. Maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, God, I'm that that's stupid. Like... <laughs> <laughs> and so how, how long have you guys all been working with the Muppets where who's what was actually what was the first thing you ever worked on with the Muppets you remember anyone Rachel mine was mayhem so (laughs) so you started on the mayhem right yeah Yeah. what um what was that like to step into this craziness uh, it was honestly like the biggest honor of my life, which sounds silly and dramatic, but like no. showing up the first day and realizing how it was work for everybody else, you know, but like good work. But it was just so funny that because I showed up like not terrified, but like, oh, this is actually happening. And then I stepped into our little workshop and like yeah. everybody was just laid out. And I was like, oh, my God, they're so much smaller than I expected. <laughs> and, oh, wow. and I remember I like purposely made sure that like animal was the first muppet i ever touched because he was my favorite so Aww. i like i had like a little ceremony as i was like trying not to shed a tear while people were like we need to get this set up and that set up and i was like okay yeah that'd be fine we can do this so Aww. but i truly it was like to be able to work with these so it's like i've worked with jurgen before i've worked with Russ before like i'm like i've worked with stacy and other wrangler um but like right. everybody else that i met that was new was really it was like just so amazing to see so much like hive mind knowledge in one place and to see how much like reverence but also like silliness that people put into like what we were doing and like Mm. how it created create this like unique sense of like what i think is like so muppety and wonderful so like to actually like get to like just be in the presence of that was really it's cool it's really yeah (laughs) right i had a good time oh that's so great how about you, Gress? Um, the first time I ever touched a Muppet, I don't know if I should talk about it. Um, it <laughs> sounds weird and dirty. Yeah. Uh, um, no, it was a, a Muppet Broadway live test thing. Oh, and, uh, oh right. Peter, yeah, yeah. Back when Debbie yeah. was uh, Debbie was part yeah. of Muppet Studios. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and right. uh, I was actually there performing it. So. Um, oh right. A test wow. and. Uh, like Floyd was sitting on the table and I had to do Floyd and the scene coming up and Peter was there. It was the first time we arrived. And I was like, can, can I, can I touch him? He's like, yeah, you're going to be using them. Go ahead. We're like, what are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah. Um, but then my first like steady job with Muppets I, it was the ABC show. I think it was the first time I really got in there and was there right. regularly. Right. Right. How about you here again? Uh, oh gosh, this is, we're going way back now, 1998. Uh, I was working in Wilmington, North Carolina. There was a film studio there and. De Laurentiis. Yeah. Sony one, and, right? and or Screen Gems or well, Sony? It was De Laurentiis Screen Studios. Gems, it was De Laurentiis, but then they turned it to Screen Gem. Yeah. Well, uh, that's where I think the, I know the establishment still there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's and, but it was actually Elmo and Grouchland, and the Henson team brought him down, and that's when I first met Jane Gutnick. And oh. so the, they had such a good time. Plus, I think there was a there was like a tax break, you know, we were filming in North Carolina. Right. So yeah. they left their entire studio, all their equipment there, over the summer, 
and they came back in the winter and did Muppets from Space, and they called me back because I was kind of like just a, a nobody PA on Elmo, but they called me back to help out on set and be a fabricator, and so that was wow. my first real Muppet adventure was Muppets in, from Space. Wow. Yeah. And Gene, so, uh, Gene, was that your first kind of thing? Well, aside from Sesame Street, it was I did the storyboards on that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And and can we just talk about Jane for a moment? Just uh, can can you guys just give the audience a just an idea of Jane? Look, he's Jergen's laughing. But I I have to tell you, I'm always just have always been fascinated with Jane because her attention to detail and I. And and everybody, you all have this artistic attention to detail. I think that's what makes the Muppets who they are because it's those little things, you know, that I love. And I mentioned a little thing on another show about Johnny Fiamma uh, when he came, when they had built Johnny for Muppets Tonight, and we were playing with him, and Jane was watching me do it, and she was, as I was doing him, she noticed that I would do this kind of smirk, you know, like, and, and we called it a Jersey smoke like this. It has the little things. And she goes, he doesn't have those. And, you know, and she wanted to put those in. Those got added. And for me, that just all of a sudden, it worked for me. So I'm just amazed by her and her eye for things. Can you guys talk a little bit about Jane? She's, so people know out there, uh, Muppet, the workshop supervisor on this show, and, of course, many other things. But anybody? Little Jane? I call her the living Muppet encyclopedia because mm. she has all the knowledge. I mean, she, and you know, if you pin something wrong on Miss Piggy or you did something on Gonzo, she'll go, Oh no, 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 no. Back in, you know, 1984, yeah. we had to do this and we did that and we mm. couldn't do it like that. So that's why we don't do that. Like, okay, yes, ma'am. So right. she, she is a, a, bottomless repository of information when it comes to the market right. she's invaluable yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i um i think you know even though things are done in a certain way i also think she's open to new ideas new people trying things discovering things you know um she definitely has her way and i that's what i love about her you know she knows what she wants yeah. you know <laughs> Uh, Even like, but she wants to discuss it. She wants to discuss it with you, and she absolutely. wants to debate debate it with her about the pros and cons. Right, because yeah. I think that's how you find the right thing. Right, that's yeah. that's yeah. the way she gets to it. Yeah. Earlier, Sorry, you guys, you guys were talking about earlier, uh, uh, Lips's pupils. Yeah. And <laughs> that was over a two week process with us in the shop and Jane and. You re we really anything had to we had to get it past her first before right right you know it would it would go anywhere but like we yeah. tried endless different ideas and options and we talk talked about it been in this in the show for over two weeks of constant yeah. you know trial and error and we did different mock-ups and you know right. bring them to you and get your input and get the director's input and everybody and yeah. uh, you know she's the one that's there in the shop representing us for the, the physical side but also for the muppet legacy i feel like that's she represents it because yeah i think she's so long. she's protecting the integrity of these characters that she's Absolutely. devoted her life to you know and the art of it uh she's uh mm -hmm. yeah she's amazing mm -hmm. um well guys i think uh we're gonna Oh, wrap up. I need a Muppets Mayhem blooper reel on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> I agree, Grace. I was I just agree. asking Billy the other day if there was a blooper reel, but it doesn't seem to be the moment anyway. I don't think we made one. Anybody remember a blooper that happened on I set? I need to be Disney Plus friendly. Would it be? <laughs> oh, there was, there was a shot. There was a shot at the shack. Camera facing the front door looking in. It's the introduction of uh, Teeth's parents. It was like the cliffhanger. Yeah. And... Yeah. Uh, the main character opens the door and she's like, hello. And you can see this, the back of the head of the mom and dad. And she's like, Dr. Teeth and teeth is supposed to come running in. And so you basically, you know, the performer is standing on this little platform because the whole set is raised up <laughs> almost four feet off the ground. So yeah. the, the, the performer has to stand very still on this little tiny platform because there's no floor there. 
for Dr. Teeth and Bill to walk up and you were wearing those, your high rise boots and you were walking, missed your footing and you just see Teeth go, whoa, and just <laughs> ram, ram right into Lily. And she's like, oh God. And <laughs> I actually got that one on my own phone because oh, you I, did? I, uh, well, I just thought it was a cool shot. Yeah, yeah. And I just happened to catch, oh, and then there goes Teeth right into Lily. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> Everything good. was fine. Nobody, no puppets were hurt. But, right. Uh, no puppets were harmed in the film during the filming no. of this series. That yeah. was just one that just comes to mind immediately. All right. And and your great meme, but we won't say what that said. Um, with Dr. Oh. Teeth under oh, the Oh no, not no, no, no. <laughs> that desert scene. That, I, I have to agree with Peter McKenna. That was I really enjoyed the hallucination on, on the uh, the desert right. scene. All yeah. that stuff, mm -hmm. the jabberwocky, yeah. teeth, the arms. That was so much fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about just real quick, you guys, do you have a favorite episode maybe or, or a, a moment that you loved after seeing the show? <laughs> the thing that made me laugh the most was definitely was um, when you guys were doing the big pool party and they're like, what's this party? And Janice goes through like, oh, it's to recognize this, 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 this. Oh, it's yeah. It's just like pool party. And I was like, right. <laughs> best joke in the whole show. That and all the cold open. Like you're talking right. about blooper reels. You guys being stuck in that van on that stage, the weirdest things came out of you well, guys yeah. after all. <laughs> and that was always a treat. We we hallucinated ourselves in there. Yeah. Uh, How are you, Russ? It's not an episode. It's one of my favorite guests because I love when the puppets play with the guests. These, mm -hmm. you know, that's mm -hmm. the great thing about puppets is they're there. They're physically mm -hmm. there with humans, and that's I think you know the people that work with the Muppets and love working with the Muppets over and over again. That's they get it. You're right. you're acting with a cartoon that's really there. Yeah, and. Uh, Kevin Smith loved being there. And yeah. he just, that, you know, everyone on set that day in the crew just loved their job even more because he made sure everyone knew how lucky they were that they were with the Muppets all the time. He was so excited, wasn't he? Yeah. He's great. Yeah, sweet. All we right, folks. Getting... Yeah. Thank you all for taking your on. time. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Jurgen, it's uh, back. It's it's back. It just flew in. I'm oh, not the bird, for bird. There's a time. bird. What? I'm not falling for. <laughs> There's a drunk guy standing in your doorway. <laughs> oh wait, what? Oh. Yeah, see. All right. Thank you all. all right. We appreciate you. Thank yeah. you. Nice you. to meet you all. Bye. 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 Rachel. Nice to see you guys. Bye. 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 Kick. 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 Keep dancing. Keep dancing. Keep, dancing. Keep going. What else? Keep, keep going. Da, 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 da. <laughs> that was cool. Do you want to answer a few questions before we, before we sure. say goodbye? Is there uh, any questions there? Jesse, what was that question I asked you to uh, ask at the end of the show? It was uh, real quick. I can't. Question for love? Bill. Here you go. From Seth Martin. It would be great to see Rolf return to his roots in some type of late night talk show. What do you think you can, uh, what do you think and can you drop what you're doing and make that happen? Go. All right. I'll see you guys later. I'm going right. to start. All that. right. He's doing it. <laughs> you mean like a Jimmy Dean thing that he would be like a sidekick on a Jimmy Dean show? Ah, uh, geez. I don't know. Maybe who knows? I mean, maybe it'd be fun. Maybe we talk to Jimmy Kimmel, see if he needs a little sidekick for a few <laughs> weeks or something. I don't know. Who knows? Cool. You never know. We could put it out there. I'll, I'll throw it out there. Maybe see if it sticks. Thank right. you for the idea. Here is the one you, you can't take. You can't get paid for it. I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, uh, Disney Legal will not uh, let you take credit for it if we use it. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Jesse had this earlier, and I told him. He said, Bill, do you and the guys record the vocals for the album together or separately? Uh, both. Uh, it just depends on schedules and when we record uh, certain voices, certain characters. Sometimes, you know, we we <clears throat> prefer having the melody laid out and we'll all do the melody too if we're not all together um, so that it gives our producers like an Ed Mitchell or someone like that, a chance to play around and say, Oh, you know what? This vocal works great for Floyd and let's put Janice and Floyd together here. But, um, 
it's both really, Jesse. It's we do it alone. And then sometimes if we're fortunate, we prefer being together and doing it. So the other guys are kind of in the booth and everybody has an idea and goes, oh, he just did that thing. We should do that, you know, and uh, instead of us trying to piece it all together later, sometimes it's really fun. My preference is to to be together so we can enjoy each other's energy and figure things out on, on the day. Yeah. How about this from Laura Shaver? Was the scene on the bus where the band is throwing out album names improvised? No. No, those were brilliantly scripted by our writing team, uh, led by Adam and Jeff and so many great writers. We had just a great, great writer's room. But no, those were uh, those were all scripted. Oh, here, I got one. Um, so is season two coming out for real? Well, it's um, pretty much... Th- what? What? 